Can you guys hear that? I gotta sign up. a crazy noise for me. Nobody hears this crazy noise. Hear it. You can? Yeah. There's something got going on with the uh Zoom call, guys. There we go. It ah. went away. What what did you guys do to fix that? Hey, now it's doing it again. Can you guys hear this noise? Anybody? Can, can you hear me talking? Vince. Yes. Can anybody hear this noise? No. So yes. It's just on our end. Austin hears it. Look, it, it just went away again. Up there, guys. Now it's doing it again. It's like we're being hacked right now. What's going on with the... Uh, computer in there all right now you just muted me no there you go you guys you guys weren't muted i think that was the issue because it's not doing it anymore can you hear me now yes austin can you can, can you hear that noise uh -uh. Okay. No way. can you guys let freddie and, and uh natalie in are they in It's not showing up on mine. I don't see him. You guys are the host, I believe. So can you let Natalie and Freddie in on the uh, thing if they're trying to get in? I just texted him. He said we needed to let him in. Hey, hey. Oh, okay. There we go. I hear someone. There he hey. is. Hey. How are you? Good morning. Great morning, actually. Yes. Early and morning. Early morning, can, I want to say. You guys can see topic. Natalie's on there as well. Can can I can I introduce you guys real quick to everyone? Even though everybody probably knows you by now. I've been building you guys up all week and making sure everybody knew about this meeting. So uh, as you guys know, uh, this year we're very lucky to have uh, Natalie Linker as our director and um, partnered up with her. Uh, came her the VP and, and our, our vice president is Fred Hedaya and uh, Natalie has just been absolute uh, godsend to us this year um, she's really helped us out in ways that uh, our previous director was the was the president of the company so just to be honest I didn't go to him with a lot of stuff 
that we could have probably used some help with. And uh, she really, really is willing to do whatever it takes to, to, to make it happen. And it's just that I can't, I can't, I can't believe I'm just very impressed and very thankful uh, to have her on our side, guys. Uh, and, and if you guys know, I already talked and bragged about her tons. And she's got tons of experience that she brings to the table. Um, and, and she, her first uh, SGA was in Chicago. Uh, her first SGA was Bob Olson in Chicago. So that's like where she came up. This is her hood. This is where she, she wants to rock it with us. And she, she has like a little bit of skin in the game, which is even more special uh, to the story. And then, and then, you know, I didn't even realize when I got Natalie that she's like, oh yeah, by the way, you know, your our uh, VP is going to be Fred Hadaya. I was like, Fred Hadaya, you don't even know, like me and Freddie go, go way back, man. Um, uh, Freddie, when, when I came in, Fred Hadaya was the SGA in Philadelphia and he was blowing numbers out of the water in that area. Uh, and he, he came in um, uh, probably what, 10 years before I did. I yeah, believe. 2002, I started. I was an SGA in, uh, I don't know, 2006, he, five, four, five. So he retired how many years ago? He, he can tell you. 2015. 15 years. So literally after like 13 years, he walks away with uh, well over $100,000 in residual income. Uh, when I talked to him, he blew, blew it out of the water blew it out of the water <laughs> uh and 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 became really good friends with us we were in pittsburgh he was in philadelphia and he was just a hop skip and a jump down the turnpike and uh, i always got to visit his agency and before you know it man just uh we got a good history and uh became just great friends and um his wife is just amazing he has a beautiful daughter and uh or i mean a beautiful son and daughter-in-law and uh and they just have uh grandkids now so he's a grandfather and um, he uh, he's just a great friend. I mean, I, I was surprised he, he showed up and surprised me at my 30th birthday party. We had a little surprise and I hopped on this, uh, the uh, the bus and I, I looked over and I saw Fred and, and Brenda. I was like, holy cow, man, they get they came up to visit and they were at my wedding. And I just can't tell you how special it is to, to have him on our side this year, guys. Um, but to get down to business, uh, there's some major things that they saw that are literally uh, for us a turnkey away uh, from turning the corner three months from now and having the most amazing summer uh, all of us on this call could ever possibly have dreamed of. So I wanted to get them on ASAP. We didn't want to push this call back uh, any any longer than we had to. So I really am excited to have them on today, guys. So uh, give them a please, a, a, a round of applause and, and welcome to the call, guys. Thank you so much for hopping on for, for us today, man. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thrilled to be here. Thanks, guys. So um, I'm going to actually just open up kind of with a story and a game plan of what I want to kind of cover heading um, into the future here to make sure that we can not just have a meeting about this stuff, but to where we can help you guys to really manage your numbers and your business by, you know, actual data that's particular to you, meaning you know, we can actually figure out, guys, how much profit you make when you invest in recruiting down to a dollar. But in order to do that, I need to have some of our individual numbers, which I'm going to get with Tommy and get. And then I want to set up some one on ones with our MGAs to help you guys to have um, a solid game plan, guys, on what we need to do weekly to make sure that whatever we put in equals the output that is your goal. Makes sense? Because in order for us to be able to grow our business, we have to add people to the roster. And that was something that when I was new, um, it took me a minute to figure that out. I always thought, well, maybe if I just train my people better, then we'll get more production, right? Or maybe if uh, I just spend all my time with the people I have, I can develop them all into President's Club members, right? But the thing is, is in our business, guys, it's very difficult to squeeze more out of what we already have. People get tired, but when we bring new people, we have new energy and we have new excitement and they bring new things to the agency. So a couple of things that I would like to, to talk about today, guys, 
And then I'm going to turn it over to Fred because we're up against kind of a hard deadline at 830. We both have uh, separate calls that we have to be on. And I have a little bit more flexibility than Fred. So I want to work with you guys um, over, over the next couple of weeks and save most of the time for him today. But I want to start out um, by really kind of just laying the foundation and talking a little bit. If we take ourselves for just a minute out of the business that we're in, and I want you guys to imagine that you're a retail shop owner, okay? And what you do at that retail shop is you manufacture, produce, and sell watches. Okay, nice watches. So where am I going with this, okay? Here's what I want you to think of. It costs you $200 in order to produce this watch. By the time that you come up with the materials and you hire somebody to put it together, it costs you $200, okay? You're selling the watch for $1,000. And you're in a market where this is a complete hot buy and everybody wants it. So you have the prospects right in front of you. How many watches would you guys make and sell? It's not a trick question. No, it's really not. What was that? <laughs> I think if they if, if they unmute in the office for some reason, it, it just goes crazy. Okay, so let's try this. Show of hands, who thinks that that would be a lucrative business to be in? All right. So you guys wouldn't mind selling some watches if you got you know. 80% of what you brought in was profit. Cool. So here's the, what, what do we got over there in the big room? I can't, I, I can't see your face enough to know what your name is, but what were you going to say? All right. We're not unmuting in the big room. We'll roll with it. <laughs> <laughs> we can't even see it now. Can you guys hear us on this microphone, this wireless receiver? Yes. Did someone have something that they were contributing or no? <laughs> we can hear you. Oh, <laughs> TV is turned off. We can all see you. Okay. Nobody. Yeah, no, we can hear and see. It's all good. The, uh, just go for it, Natalie. All right. So, guys, my point with the watch story is that you are in a business right now that is just as lucrative. Okay. And the only thing that we need to change, what I want to do with each of you, and then I'm going to turn it over to Fred because we're going to run out of time. What I want to do with each of you is sit down and figure out how much your watch is going to cost you to make and what your profit is going to be because we're not selling watches guys. We're actually selling something that is so much more lucrative because when we sell a watch, we don't get paid on that watch only one time. When that customer comes in and buys that watch, right? In this business, not, do we, not only do we make a profit when we train and develop people the correct way to where they go out and they produce ALP, but we receive a profit on that, guys, for the rest of our life. The key to this, and then I'm going to turn this over to Fred, is that we've got to make sure we're, we're being the right thing here. Because what we have in this business is we have goldfish and we have sharks, right? Goldfish, listen, none of them are bad. I used to love goldfish. I remember when I was a little kid, I would spend like $100 at the fair trying to win a goldfish that was gonna die in three days when I got it home, right? Because it was living at the fair when 
really I could have just went to PetSmart and bought a $2 goldfish, but it was the fun part was to win it, right? There's nothing wrong with goldfish. They're pretty. They swim around in the bowl and they wait for Tommy to feed them. What's the difference between a goldfish and a shark? Sharks hunt. Sharks hunt, guys. Sharks go get their food. They're not, they're not swimming around trapped in a little bowl waiting for somebody to hand them something. They go out and get it. And I don't know about you, but I would rather be a shark. Sharks are cool. There's like a whole week dedicated to them on like, you know, some channel where they talk about sharks. We don't have goldfish week, right? I don't, if you guys find it, let me know. But I don't know how they can make a week about goldfish. So at this point, guys, I want to turn this over to Fred because we don't have a lot of time. But I also want to make sure that you understand the foundation of what I just talked about because I want to make sure we're sitting down with all of our builders and we're getting an understanding for your income goal. And then we're going to let you know exactly how many people you need to hire to make watches in order to make your profit. Make sense? All right, Fred, I'll turn it over to you, sir. Thank you. Okay, so guys, look, this is our first meeting. It's, it's not our last, okay? We're not gonna solve the problems of the universe and balance the, the country's budget this afternoon or in 15 <laughs> minutes or whatever time I've been allotted, all right? But I do wanna, as Natalie said, lay a foundation for what we wanna do going forward to help you guys to grow the agency and ultimately get out of the opportunity what you came here for, all right? Um, first of all, I wanna say I'm super excited about being able to work with this agency. When Tommy got promoted, I think I was the most excited guy at home office because he's such a stud and he's so qualified and he's been so successful and uh, I love Tommy and, and uh, you know, I know his family well, Jess, we, you know, as he said, we were at the wedding, we love her. Uh, they're just great people, great kids. And uh, there isn't anybody I wanna see be successful more than Tommy. And I know he's got the raw skills necessary to pull this off at the very highest level, okay? So when Dave announced as uh, often that he was going to be becoming an SGA and he was accepting bribes for those uh, uh, VPs that wanted to be in the running for it. Uh, it was also Dave's birthday the same day that he announced this. So I bought him an extra expensive bottle of wine, pot bribe, pot birthday present. And I brought it over to his house that night because we were going out and he says, well, you know, I was only kidding about the bribe out of it, I can't give them to you because, you know, no one else can handle them. He's a startup, he's an A player, you know, blah, blah, blah. Not that you couldn't handle them, Fred, but blah, 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 blah. And I said, well, then in that case, let's drink the wine, <laughs> okay? So we did, and I didn't bust his balls about it or anything, but lo and behold, look where we are today. So I'm super excited about having the opportunity to work with you guys. I'm super excited that Natalie is your director because uh, I actually was kind of instrumental in recruiting uh, Natalie away from the agency side and making her a director. I was so impressed with her when I got to meet her and work with her in one of the other agencies that I was coaching. And she is the right person, the right person to help your agency grow at this stage of your development. So all the pieces are in place, but here's what you need to understand. Okay, and I gotta look at my clock, my watch. I got 10 minutes, okay? Here's the part that you need to understand. It's not the nuts and bolts of what you need to do. We can write that all down and, and, and hand it to you, okay? It's the execution part of what we do that I'm gonna be working with you on. Here's the deal, good, and you're good, okay? Good is the enemy of great, and it's preventing you from achieving the level of success that you're capable of achieving. You're too soft right now to be really successful in this business. You're playing in your comfort zone. You guys are good. 
but I want to explain what great looks like. Okay. Rick Altig wrote $4 million last week. Hello? $4 million. That's more than your agency will write this year. And you guys are good. Okay? So you need to recalibrate your brain about what success looks like. Or else there's no reason for you to grow. If you're comfortable... If good is good enough, you're never going to pay the price to be great. You know, everybody wants to be like, I'm a Boston guy. This will hurt Tommy because I know he's a huge Steelers fan. Okay. But here's the deal. Everybody wants to be Tom Brady. Okay. Hot wife, gazillionaire, the greatest of all time. Okay. How many of you want to be running around in full pads in August in Tampa, having young 23 year old guys want to rip your arms and legs off your body, where you're literally running for your life. There's a price to be paid to be great. You can sit on the bench. Y'all got to be good enough to get to that level. You know what I mean? In the NFL, they're all good, but greatness is a mindset and an attitude on top of the talent, on top of the God-given talent. Without the desire to, to win, okay, you'll never play at the level of success that you're capable of. There was no, there is nobody in this business, by the way, better, better at this than Simon and the organization that that uh, that that Tommy came out of. So he's got great DNA, guys. Great DNA. He only knows how to win. Okay. So the pat the biggest thing that you guys got to embrace right now is change. Okay. And and the biggest challenge that you have is your systems are good. You just don't have enough recruiting activity going into the funnel to get out of this, what you want to do. Altig didn't write 4 million because he got everybody to write 27,000 a week. Okay. He got 27,000 people to go do it. Not quite 27,000, but you get the picture. Okay. It's, it's feet on the street. That's going to make the difference. We need to cast a wider net. We don't have our best people yet. They don't work here yet. We haven't found them. Okay. The reason that Simon is so successful, he codes about 100 people a month. When you code 100 people a month, if you've got people on your team that don't take your direction and can't write minimum standards, we probably go train somebody else. Okay, because our time is valuable, right? And we expect to get a return on our, on our investment. The other thing you need to understand is you need to understand that you are in business for yourself, but not by yourself. MGAs and RGAs in particular are stockholders in this agencies. How do you become a stockholder? You invest in the company. You buy the stock. The stock is recruited. My expectation in Pennsylvania, if I made you an MGA or an RGA, in addition to the productivity that I expected you to have and the agents and so on and so forth, I had two additional requirements. The first one was that you be in a position financially to invest $500 a week in recruiting. Because if you can't invest in recruiting, you can't build a business. There's nothing in Tommy's contract that says he will provide codes for you as the SGA. On the other hand, whether you're an SA or an SGA, you know what the first sentence in your contract says to recruit, train, and obtain 
salespeople. It's so important to American income that it's the first line in every single leadership contract that we saw, that we issue. Shouldn't it be important to the people signing it? Okay. Your job is to get your code. Period. We're going to come back and talk more about that. Don't panic. Okay. I wouldn't give you this, the problem if I didn't have the solution for you. Okay, but the expectation is that you be in a position financially to invest $500 a week in recruiting, whether it's third party vendors or whatever it is, because you got to feed the beast. You also need to understand that you need to be focused on what I call RGA activities. And this is everybody in leadership. Do not use your title to turn yourself into an administrator. There's no money in it. We pay administrators $15 an hour. We pay MGAs a quarter of a million dollars or more. And if you're in leadership, you should be aiming for that position, MGA, RGA, or you you probably shouldn't be in leadership. There's no other reason to do it, guys. There's a price to be paid to do this. This is the Navy SEALs of leadership. Okay? The other thing, the other requirement that you had to be willing and able to do at the MGA, RGA level in my agency is invest at least uh, uh, tw be able to afford to, to, to hire a administrator for at least 20 hours a week. I'd let you split it with another RGA or MGA to give the person 40 hours if we needed to. But I don't want my six figure income people fooling around with $15 administrative functions. They're important and they need to be addressed by somebody that makes $15 an hour, not by RGAs and MGAs that are making a quarter to a half a million dollars a year. But if you don't clean this stuff up, it will choke you. It's got to get handled. But if it doesn't generate revenue, it's not getting done by you. You understand what I'm saying to you? We need to have laser focus on the revenue generating activities, okay? Now, that recruiting thing in 60 seconds or less, okay? Um, I wanna do this again next week so we can kind of pick up where we're leaving off here and, and really get into it. But the, I want you guys to understand the money part of what we do and why this is important, okay? And the return on investment that you should expect to receive. This is not an expense to you. An expense is taking your girlfriend or boyfriend or husband or wife or family to dinner. That's an expense. When you invest, the, the condensation mentally is that you're going to get ROI, return on investment. Every single, asset, every single agent that you add to your deal is going to pay you dramatically dramatically, okay? You don't get $100,000 a month renewals because you are a great personal producer. You get the big money renewals and whether you realize it or not, renewals and bonuses is really what you're playing for. You get those by teaching, by building an organization and having multiple people that are coded to you out there seeing others and training them and developing them. So the leadership development, promotion and leadership development part of this, all three are, are important, recruiting, training, leadership development, but they are equally important. But here's the key. If you don't do the first one first, there's a chronological order. If you don't recruit first, you don't get to train and leadership development is never going to happen. And people just burn out and leave you because no one wants to stare at a computer screen all day long. There's gotta be a bigger picture, a vision. Make sense? Guys, I got at least another month's worth of material in me for you, but we're not gonna do it this morning, all right? Listen, it was great to get to see everybody. I, I'm literally a minute or two late for my next call. So I'm going to bounce. Natalie, I'm going to turn it back over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Freddie. 
So Have looking great forward day, man. to working Appreciate with you guys. You. One thing I want you to remember also, okay, real quick, you have a next door neighbor in that territory that's writing twice the business that you are right now. They're taking your commissions right now, okay? They're not any better or more talented than you are. They're just thinking bigger. If Rick Altig can write four million in a week, who knows what's possible, guys? Who knows what's possible? We certainly haven't played our best game yet, right? Okay, let's start thinking bigger. I'll see you all next week. Tommy, you and I will talk. Natalie, take care. Thanks, I know you got this, girl. So, guys, I have to hop too, but I just have one more thing I want to, like, leave you guys with because I know, I know Tommy well enough to know that there's a little bit of competitive spirit about him. Maybe, right? Maybe this much. You guys are a tough crowd. Thank God the girls are like laughing and having fun with me. So <laughs> just to put this in perspective, does anyone know what the population of Chicago is? Is it not? I don't know. What's the state? I don't know. Nine right, million well, I'm in the state. Look up the whole state for you right now. I think we thought it was nine million in the state. I think it's nine million in Chicago, eight, but we're gonna find out. Eight point five million. We got an answer over here. Yeah, eight point five million in Chicago and twelve point six million in <coughs> Illinois. Anyway, so here's my point, guys. Right now we have two main offices, three main offices in the Chicago land area, okay? And I am very competitive and I wanna see you guys win because I think that you have the most talent, but most importantly, the feeling that I get is that we also have a very group, a good group of people that care about people, that wanna be in people's best interests, that wanna help other people, that believe in giving back. And to me, there's no better way to give back to somebody than to take somebody that never thought that they had the ability to make a six figure income and train them and develop them and help them to reach goals that they never knew that they could reach. That to me was always the most rewarding part of being an MGA RGA. My point guys is you have 12 million people at your fingertips that you can, you have the ability to change their lives. And on the competitive side of things, when we talk about competing, I don't know if we can take out Altig in the next two years. Okay. That's a big goal, but I absolutely think you guys have the ability, the drive, the motivation and the commitment to be the number one agency in Chicago, but there is no way for us to compete with agencies that are hiring, listen, 23 people a week on average is one of them. Names aren't important. The other one is hiring 61 people a week. Our four week average guys with, I don't know if March Madness means Forget about recruiting, but it shouldn't because those are our future people that we're going to have to work, train, and grow with next month, right? So our four-week average of how many hires we have is 11. So I'm not beating you guys up, but what I'm telling you is if you want to win, there is no, we have absolutely no shot at winning when we have our competition recruiting 61 and 23 talented people a week. But the point is, is that we got 12 million people to choose from guys. They're not impeding on your opportunity, right? We've just got to focus our mindset on growing our deal through adding talent. So I want to see you guys have a strong finish to the week. I'm not going to keep you much longer because I have an 8.30 meeting as well. I just let them know I was going to be a little late because I don't get to meet with you guys very often. Um, we will definitely do, we can do next week if you want, Tommy, but I know these are your huddles that you have other content as well. So we're more than happy. Both of us can jump on next Thursday if you want. Yeah. 
please. Let's okay. keep it up. Same link, right? Yeah. All right, perfect. So we'll keep it. And then I'm also going to get with Fred um, and I want to set up one on ones with the MGAs where we can break down your specific goals and data, because I literally have a calculator where if you tell me that you want to make $500,000 a year. I can put in your income, how many, uh, how, how much ALP each of your people typically generates. And then it's going to tell us how many people you need to hire this year to make a half a million dollars next year. You with me? But that's hard to do because everybody's goals are different. So we want to do that as well. But for today, guys, we just kind of want to delay the groundwork. You know, it all starts with our, our new talent and making sure that they're taken care of and making sure that, you know, once we do get them in here, we approach the situation with urgency. Remember back, guys, to when you were brand new and you had to go through the licensing process. I know we have some people from different states. But, you know, for me, it was eight weeks and I was committed to being here. But when I got here, you know, I remember the person that did my group said in the group, if your transmission is going out, now is not the time. The time has to be right as well, right? Guess whose transmission was going out? I didn't care. I was going to get my ALP to pay for it before it went out, right? It's all your mindset, guys. And my transmission went out, but I wrote 10 grand so I could pay for it. <laughs> <laughs> let's focus on making sure that we're really focused on our new people. Because my point with that story, guys, is that when I came in, when I had an agent number, you know, my leadership team knew I had gone eight weeks without a paycheck and it was emergency to help me get going as long as I met their commitment level. So I'm not telling you that you need to give your business away, but I am telling you that you've got to remember you might be all right, but that new person might have just gone 12 weeks, could be even longer without a paycheck, depending on their situation before this. And their situation before this is definitely not our fault. But one of the easiest ways to get buy-in from your new people is to help them get going with a level of urgency so they can get their, their money coming in and pay their bills. Make sense? All right, guys, does anyone have any questions for me before I hop off? All right, well, listen, I love that I was able to join you guys this morning. We'll be back next week. I'll make sure I wrangle Fred. You know, I have to give him a wake up call to make this in his time zone. So, hey, Allie, just quick question. When were you anticipating doing those one on ones just so we could prep up for him? Well, I would love to do them next week. They would be about 30 minutes each and not everybody needs to be, obviously it would just be a one-on-one -on -one, and then obviously if Tommy wanted to join. Um, but with that being said, I also know that you guys are in March Madness. So I would really like for you guys to walk and chew gum at the same time with your production and your recruiting <laughs> and let you focus on, on the month. So that's kind of up to you guys. I was going to talk with Tommy and see kind of what he preferred, but most definitely in the very near future. I just okay. didn't know if you wanted to finish out the month first. Cool. Whatever Tommy thinks. Okay. We'll, we'll plan that out, Natalie, and I'll Perfect. let them. Okay. Sounds great guys. Thanks so much for your time today. I look forward to work, working with you guys moving forward. And if there's anything I can do to help, um, please let Tommy and myself know, okay? Thank you. Thank you, Natalie. Have a great day. You too. All right, guys. Good stuff. Um, do you guys have any questions for me uh, regarding anything that they went over? I think we'll, you know, I'll follow up on on the one-on-one -on -one stuff, obviously. Um she was talking about individual numbers. So regarding individual numbers, she, she was saying, you know, looking at your recruiting results, you know, how many interviews is it taking you to get a hire? That's what she, she really is, is want to zone in on. And then from there, we can figure out how many interviews it's going to take you in order to get how many how, the hires that you need that's going to get you the ALP that we need down the line. So um, one thing that they said, they said that your recruiting uh, numbers are the best in the company uh, as far as quality goes. So like when we take 
someone and we uh, put them into the group, we have a, a really good ratio on, on the people that get hired from that. She told me it was damn near the best in the company. She said, the problem is, is you don't have enough people going into your group. You have the best group. It's the best show on earth, but nobody's watching it. He says, Sabrina Lloyd, she ain't the most entertaining person. You know, it's like watching, like, uh, it's like ha having nails go across a chalkboard. That's like me listening to her. She's hiring 60 people a week, which means she probably got 180 people in the group. So she's out there taking 180 people that should be watching our amazing group and she's getting them to watch her shitty group, you know, on a weekly basis. And on a weekly basis, if, if they're hiring 60 and Simon's hiring 23, that's 80 and we're hiring 10. So we're hiring 90 people in the city of Chicago right now. And we're only getting 10 of them. They're getting 80. That drive me nuts. When I was an agent, when I was, when I was a GA, when I was a GA and I saw another GA get a hire, I was like, dude, that's someone I could have hired. And then the worst thing is, is when I saw one of my friends come in the door, one of my friends came in the door and they were booked for an interview for, for, uh, for Aaron Parks. I was pissed. I'm like, bro, what's up? He's like, oh man, well, I didn't know you worked here. Is this where you were, Tommy? I'm like, yeah, you know, I worked here. He's like, no, I, I, I was like, how'd you get in? Who, who, who called you? And I was hoping it was like one of my recruiters or something. Like, oh, I was, uh, you know, Sally or something. I'm like, oh, Sally, uh, who you meet with? I'll meet with Mr. Parks. I'm like, darn it. And it was the worst because he got to him first, you know? So we have to have this mentality uh, as far as that goes. Um, you know, and then our, our individual numbers, guys, I, I think it'll help us a little bit, but your individual numbers that you guys have are the, are the agency's numbers. They're pretty similar for all of us. We all use pretty much the same resources. Um, he mentioned RGA activities. He said, you got to be focused on RGA activities. RGA activity means revenue generating activities. He never clarified that. RGA means revenue generating activities. That's what RGA means, Tommy Whalen. You got to write that down, Tommy. You got to write RGA equals revenue generating activities. Um, because we're not doing that efficiently as we should be right now. We are not. Uh, we're still finding ourselves, but we're working on it and cutting them out like uh geo recognized that he was spending too much time at the mailing uh facility so that's definitely you know a uh, 15 dollars an hour employee thing like drew i mean how about how many times are you going to send drew to the to, to to the mailbox josh doesn't april work here you know what i'm saying you got your top dude who's supposed to be generating revenue for your organization and you're telling him go to the mailbox Go walk your dog for two hours a day. I mean, come on, bro. That's not revenue. Je Hire a fucking dog walker. That's what I would do. You know what I'm saying? We need to be, we need to be generating revenues and not being dumb with our time. That's what he's talking about. But but Fred, Freddie, keep it real with us. So um, uh, he said MGA should be investing $500 a week in the recruiting. That was 15 years ago, guys, 15 years ago. The cost of things double every 20 years. We're damn there where it should be a thousand if we're playing that game. But why wouldn't you spend a thousand dollars a week make, to make $5,000 a week? Sounds pretty simple to me. I knew that when I was 18 years old, when I was flipping shit in the streets, it was pretty simple shit basic stuff it's not that that difficult why what, what's going on here guys that's what i'm wondering like marvin why aren't we busting it out you want to take your family to the next level bust it out scared money don't make no money last time i checked unless you just like to sing rap songs you'll sing the rap song scared money don't make no money but nobody wants to be about it let's be about it i'm about it 
I spent every nickel I had to get out here, guys. Every nickel, every nickel. And then I borrowed, I borrowed a hundred thousand dollars from the company, and then I had to borrow money from the bank to get out here. And then I paid two mortgages for a year. Eight grand a month in Pittsburgh, nine grand a month out here, twenty, and then twenty thousand dollars a month to operate this office. We ain't making no money right now, just so you guys know, until we're doing a hundred thousand a week. Just so I'll just let you guys know. Like, I'm not even good. Like, I I was good. I he's talking about being good to go to great. Do you remember the quote that founded this organization? Can somebody quote me on the quote that founded this organization? The mother effing reason that I'm here today, that we are all here today on this call. There's one quote that got us here. What was it? Tommy, you, I remember when you called me. This is the first thing you said to me. <laughs> you said, you said, we're good in Pittsburgh. You know, we're good. But I can't accept good <laughs> when I know there's great available. Let's go. Yes. Let's go. That's it. And, 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 and Freddie's calling us on some shit right now. He's calling everybody here, telling everybody, you're good, but you ain't great. And I didn't come here to be good. I was already good. I didn't need to move my family out here to be good and stick them here with no friends. My, my son don't have no friends. You, you feel me? Like there's sacrifices that are being made. Nobody hears me complain. My wife don't complain nothing. We ain't, bitch, I don't, I don't bring them into meetings. I don't even bring my family into this. But the point is, guys, we came out here to be great. I was getting 10 hires a week when I was at MGA by myself. I was getting eight to 10 hires a week when I was at MGA by myself. And I wasn't even making no money at the time. There was no nice office. The group wasn't even that good. I had to do it all. I try and tell you this over and 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 over again. I try and tell it to you over again is that every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, I had to be here in a suit and a tie, and I was calling resumes from 8 until 10, and then from 10 until 11, I was doing first interviews, and then from 11 to 12, I was running the group. And then I was taking my people out and training them with a smile on my face and buying them fucking hamburgers and cheeseburgers and, and sandwiches. And breakfasts and lunches and dinners, and taking them to the gas station and everything else. And then I had to drive two hours into the field, two hours back. That's why I don't feel bad if I see somebody building their dream with a smile on their face and in their office till 11 o'clock at night. At least you weren't driving. People want to, like, you guys want to leave at nine o'clock. That's cool, but my ass was driving until midnight, until one o'clock, until two o'clock. That's why Gio don't give a fucking shit. Gio don't give a shit. Gio don't care. Gio's like, dude, I normally would be driving right now, like almost wrecking, pulling over, sleeping in hotels, taking a nap in my car on the side of the road. He's like, I'll be at the fucking office all night. My house is five minutes away. But I don't want to see that. It's time to be great. We got to work smarter. We have to start working smarter because if, if we're going to be here for this many hours and get fucking 10 hires a week, what are we doing? We might as well just all take the weekends off. If we're going to get 10 hires in a week, we just take the weekends off. It's not going to get anybody anywhere. You want to know why we did 55,000 last week? Check the, check the report. Check the ALP report, guys. What did the ALP report say? The ALP report said 55,000. We get on a call today and they say we get 11 hires a week. How many times do we go over these numbers? How many times do we go over these numbers? However many codes you get per month is however many uh, ALP you're going to get per week. One code per month, 5,000 per week. Two code per month, 10,000 per week. Five. Five codes per month, 25,000 a week. 10 codes a month, 50,000 a week. 11 codes in a month, 55,000 a week. However many hires you get per week is going to be however many codes you get per month. We've been getting 11 hires per week. So 11 hires per week is 55,000 a week. No shit. That's why we're doing 55,000 a week right now. The only way we're going to get to 150,000 a week is we got to do 30 hires a week. 
30 hires, 30 hires, 30 hires. We, go, we, we, we have to start holding people accountable to getting hires. This is, this is why we're on this call is to grow. There's all kinds of stuff to this business we can talk about. But until we start getting hires, we don't need to talk about nothing else. We're not talking about anything else from now on. Don't even ask any questions about anything. If you, want, if you ask me a question from now on, the answer is going to be, how many hires did you get last week? That's what the answer is going to be. How many interviews do you have set right now? How many people were in the group? I'm going to answer. I'm going to give you a porcupine effect. You guys know what the porcupine effect is? It's when you answer a question with a question. Because whatever you're asking me a question about, if it ain't about getting hires, it's pointless. It's useless. Stop talking about it. We ain't even going to have nothing to talk about. You're not going to be in leadership anymore, bro. I love you, but unless you start getting some interviews set, you're not going to be in leadership anymore. I know you have one person in training class, but that's, that's not even close to nothing. How many people are in your pipeline right now? Who's in your next training class? Who's in the next training class? Who's studying for their script right now? Uh, who's taking their test this week? How many people do you have taking their test this week, Marvin? Who's in the next training class for you? How's your script review going? When's, your, when's the next person on your team getting released? How many people are you going to have on your team by the end of July? What's your game plan to get there? How much money are you investing in the recruiting right now? How much time are you investing in the recruiting right now? You can't tell me it's your number one thing. If you want to know what's important to somebody, look at their checkbook and look at their calendar. You want to tell me growth is important, but you're spending zero time on recruiting and zero money on recruiting? The malls are open last time I checked. Restaurants are open last time I checked. Why are we not running around the malls, running around all the outlets? There's millions of shopping outlets everywhere. Everybody's off. Everybody don't got no jobs. They're getting laid off. They just seen what happened with COVID. They know there's no job security in the place that they're working at right now. What are we doing? And what, are, what lies are we telling ourselves that we have to do right now? It's more important than going to recruit somebody this morning. What are, you, what are you making up in your brain that is more important than going and getting these hires? What do you think? What are you making up? What do you think is more important? Like, because I'm going to tell you when I see indicators, like where we need to pick it up and stuff. But after a while, like, if you, unless you start to catch on, I can't keep telling you. You got to start catching on and start getting, getting, it, getting the hires. Colleges are going to graduate and they're all, all the college kids are going to go watch Sabrina Lloyd's group. What are we doing with these colleges? We got the number one group. You guys should be putting people in there. It's running three day, three times a day. So make sure we got the right verbiage. We can't be overselling selling the opportunity. You got to have the right verbiage to get them in there and make them want to watch it. So here, make sure you're not saying this, watching the group. That looks like they're watching something, right? You want to say, what I can do is I can get you an invitation to 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 meet with our state director i can get you an invitation to meet with our state director now after you meet with him that's what you want to say meet with don't say watch the group that's 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 why we're not having some people sit through the group you know back before i would i would say say you know what you're going to do is, is you're going to take time and you're going to meet with our state director our state director is going to take time I may, you always got to let him know, he, he's going to take time with you and with a few other uh, candidates that we felt were compatible and go over the career in more detail. We're not going to be able to move forward with everybody. So make sure you pay close attention, take some good notes for yourself. Okay. And then afterwards, um, there, 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 there's going to be a questionnaire just for the people that are serious about the career. So uh, afterwards, um, you know, if you're serious about your career and taking this to the next level uh, or to the you know, final interview, then, then they're going to ask you to fill out a questionnaire. I can't guarantee you that we are going to be able to move forward with you after you meet with our state director. OK, um, you know, but uh, if everything goes well, 
uh, they'll potentially look to set up a final interview. And at that point, that's when all the hiring decisions are made at that point. So right now, Joe, uh, you know, I'm not sure if this is going to be the best fit for you. Uh, we just met here at the store for a couple of minutes, you know, okay. Uh, but I think if we spend a little bit more time together, we will both know, we'll both have a better idea of whether or not it makes sense for us to move forward. Or if I caught him on the phone, Hey, Joe, it was great catching up with you today. I'm glad that you uh, sent your resume over here and I was able to catch you this morning uh, before you before you head off to, to your, uh, you know, to your afternoon shift or, you know, I was glad I were to catch you before. Actually, we're going to go play basketball with the team here, man. So I was glad I were to catch you here this morning real quick. Um, but I just want to let you know, you know, I, um, you know, at this point, you know, I can't guarantee you anything, you know, but I. You know, some, something like that. What I, what I typically would say is I say, um, I say at this point, Joe, I can't guarantee if, if this is going to be the best fit or not. In fact, you know, we just talked on the phone for a couple of minutes. So I don't know if this is going to be the best fit. But I think if we spend a little bit more time together, then we will both have a better idea of whether or not it makes sense for us to move forward. And I'm glad I caught you here today because our state director is going to be meeting with a couple people that we felt compatible with, a couple other candidates, okay? And uh, he actually only has a few times um, that he's going to be doing that this week. Um, so what, what, I, what I can do is uh, I can help you get registered for these times. So what we have either uh, today, he's gonna meet with people at two o'clock or this evening at six o'clock. And then there's also a time available tomorrow. Did you, which day would work best for you? Tomorrow? Okay. And we have uh, morning or afternoon? The morning? Okay, perfect. So then uh, for tomorrow, Joe, that's going to be actually uh, 10 a.m. All right, what I'm going to do, I'm going to shoot you over a text message right now. You click on that, click on the link. And when you click on the link, register for 10 a.m. tomorrow. Here, I'll, while I'm on the phone with you, just uh, let me know if you got the link. All right, perfect. There you go. And just click on that. Yeah, you want to, you can just put it on speaker. I'll walk you through it. Put them on speaker, walk them through it, and have them register for the group. Right there. Boom. While you're on the phone with them. Dude, that, I would do it because I don't really want to worry about it, man. Because you know what other happens is then we say, all right, hey, I'm going to shoot you a link and then register. And then we, guess what we got to do? Now I got to follow up. And I'll tell them that up front. I'm like, Joe, I'm extremely busy, okay? And um, just to avoid me having to follow up with you, because I don't want to put you on the list and find out you're not registered for the 10 o'clock, because obviously that's going to look bad for me telling our state director that you're going to meet with them, and then you don't even register for the time. So let's get you registered now. That way I don't have to follow up, you know, blah, 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 right? Dude, I would play the state director card so big. I'd be like, our state director is so busy. And here's what I would tell him is I'm like, all right, uh, our state director is actually in town this week and he's going to be spending time with a few people. That was, you know, that, that's what I would tell him. You could probably still say, you can still say he's in town this week. Due to the overwhelming response, we're at such a huge point of growth right now that they're asking us to only schedule time with serious candidates. Due to the overwhelming response right now, we have so many candidates re applying and, and resumes coming in that, you know, Joe, they just, they just really only want us to schedule time with serious candidates right now. Guys, I've been recruiting like crazy for the last how many years? This is like easy, not, not, and this is how you guys should be too. You guys should be so, so good at, at the recruiting and have so many different, you know how you're in the home, you got all these clothes. When you're booking, you got all your little thing. We got to be with that with recruiting. You got to have everything. Like if the guy's in sales, you got to be able to get them. If the guy made a hundred thousand last year, you got them. If they were a teacher, you know how to recruit them. If they're a retail sales, you know what to say. If they're a bartender, you know what to say. If they're a rest restaurant person, you know what to say. If they already got an insurance license, you know what to say. That's the same thing. You got to be with the recruiting is this closing. It sells, you know, instead of selling life insurance, we're selling the dream. So, you know, you can sell life insurance and you can get rich or you can teach people how to sell life insurance and get even more rich. How about that? Right. You, you can sell the dream and get wealthy. 
So do you want to get rich or wealthy? Last time I said wealthy is above rich. You can teach people how to sell the dream and then get even more wealthy. So do you want to sell life insurance and get rich? Or do you want to teach people how to sell life insurance and get more rich? Do you want to sell the dream and get wealthy? Or do you want to teach people how to sell the dream and get even more wealthy? All right. So we got to turn it up and, and we got to start getting 20 hires a week, like minimum. And that's just going to get us like in the game. The number's 30. <clears throat> so we might as well just say 30. We might as well just say 30, map it out and start getting it down. That's not even two hires a person on this call. That's every SA getting one hire a week, every GA getting two hires a week, and MG, every MGA getting three hires a week. Should be close to it if we do something like that. Each individual getting those hires. If you're in management, you got to get at least one hire a week. All right. All right. So um, talk about that. You know, uh, Vince, Josh, you know, uh, MGAs, uh, you guys got to make sure you have staff. I, I like that thing, staff, you know, and, and Gio got a remote staff person, which is very helpful as well. I have a remote staff person which is Jackie. Um, the first thing I did when I became an MGA is I hired her. The first thing I did is I got myself an assistant. The first thing I, I didn't do, you want to know what, guys, you want to know when I became an MGA, you want to know why the first thing that I didn't do was uh, invest $500 a week in the recruiting. The first thing I did when I became an MGA is I got myself an assistant. You guys want to know why I did that? Anybody, anybody have a guess? It's almost like a trick question. Okay, you ready for this, guys? You ready? Hope you can get this. I became an MGA, and the first thing I did is I got myself an assistant. I did not put money into recruiting. And here's why. Here's why, okay? Because I was already spending well over $500 a week in the recruiting when I was a GA. So I just kept doing that when I was an MGA. I didn't have to change nothing. The thing I had to add when I was an MGA, I had to add the assistant. I was already spending a shitload of money on recruiting. Probably, dude, I would make, I would make, I swear I'd make 2000 bucks for a week as a GA and I'd put a thousand right back into it. People thought I was nuts. My family members were pissed at me. I got MGAs that make way more than $2,000 a week. I got GAs in there making more than $2,000 a week. Now it's not the time to cake up money so you can go, go on vacations and buy Louis Vuitton and get sunglasses and get Christmas gifts this year. That's not what this year is about. This year is about growth. In order to grow, is what we got to do is we got to take any money that you get, okay? So, so let me just show you an example, okay? You take a thousand dollars, all right, and you go buy um, the watches. Go buy buy the watches, and then you sell those watches for two thousand dollars. And when you make the two thousand dollars, you don't just take the thousand bucks and buy more watches and take the other thousand and put it in your pocket. You take the extra thousand, and now instead of one thousand, guess how many thousand you got? You got two thousand. So you take that two thousand. And you reinvest it back into the watch game. And now you're able to buy twice as many watches. So next week, instead of making a thousand bucks, next week you flipped it and you made two thousand bucks. So now your two thousand turned into four thousand. And instead of taking that extra two thousand and putting it in your pocket, you take it and you put it back into the watch game and you flip it. I don't see many people really doing that here. I mean, maybe a little bit where you're like, I'm good, but nobody's doing it to the level of greatness. Not, not to the level of a 25-year-old Tommy Vina when I was a GA, 25 years old, putting $1,000 a week into recruiting easily. I have, I have multiple people come on this call and, and, and vouch for me and will say, yeah, probably more than that. He's probably lying to you. It's probably more than $1,000 a week. 
because for me, it's like, well, dude, it's like if you invest a thousand dollars a week in the recruiting, that should get me five hires. Okay, that'll give me five hires. Five hires is going to get me twenty five thousand dollars a week in production. They checked our systems, guys. They checked them. They said, dude, if you put people into your system, they, this is a very, very successful system that you have. And I, I, I can agree. I feel like our system needs a lot of work. It's not even close to where I want it to be at. Our system's not even near where I want it to be. It's good. We have a good training system. We have a good training system. Our lead system is ridiculous. You want to know why people are writing a shit kind of business? That's why we're good. Because we don't got to fucking work like I used to have to work. We don't have to work like Josh and Gio and Casey used to have to work. If, if Gio wanted to have a big week, Gio had to drive six hours and stay on the other side of the state and door knock people. You guys are getting away with being good because I'm giving you the best fucking leads. You're getting people who filled a card out yesterday, today. When does that happen? Never! 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 Never, ever, 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 ever. I'm just trying to show you. Vince, can somebody tell me? Have you ever, has this ever happened to you, Drew? That's why you're writing all this business and it's so easy. We're taking it for granted. We're not using it. We're not using the extra money and being smart with it. Nobody's spending money on gas. Nobody's taking time driving but we're still skipping stuff on applications because we don't got five minutes to get the freaking application filled out. What do you mean? Just remember this, do it right or do it over. If you don't have time to do it right, how are you gonna have time to do it over? Don't be acting like you're so busy like you can't do it right right now. Because if you don't do it right right now, you're gonna have to do it over. And the reason you didn't do it right is because you didn't have time. If you don't have time to do it now, how are you gonna have time to do it over later? And just remember this, guys, if you lose one piece of business, it takes three good pieces of business to make up for that, just to get back to square one. If you lose one piece of business, it takes three pieces just to get back to square one. So don't lose any business at all, ever, ever. Or don't sign them up. Don't submit the application. We're trying to be short-term heroes. And then in the long run, you end up as a long-term zero. We don't need to be a hero this week just to hit some numbers. If you're here for the long term, you want to do that stuff. So anyways, guys, that's what I, I, I mean. This is a wake-up call. This is a wake-up call for, 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 for me, for sure. And I'm glad Freddie got in my ass a little bit. He's like, dude, what are you doing? Like, he's telling me, he's like, what you should do? He's like, Tommy, you should just go back and do what you always do. I'm like, yeah, I guess I could. He's like, uh, he's like, you get, he's like, why don't you go get 10 hires a week yourself and just build your own team and show everybody how you can pass them all up? That's what he tell me to do. I don't want to do that. I don't want to go build my team, compete with everybody and pass you guys all up just to show you I can do that. Just to like, but if it's necessary because we need the fucking numbers, I'm going to go do it. Like if it's meant to be, it's up to me. If I got to do it, I got to do it. I ain't afraid. You guys think I can't sit here on a Zoom call and sell some ALP real quick? I don't mind hopping in here all day. I'll set up the appointment. I'll come in, I'll pitch the shit. I'll draw the shit on my thing right here. Boom. I'll draw it for them. I don't need nothing. I need a pen, a paper, a rate book, and a freedom of choice certificate. And I'll sell, I'll sell the shit. I ain't worried about that. Hiring people ain't an issue. Especially I can do it virtually anytime. 
I'll make all the training videos for myself. I'll tell them watch all the training videos. But I told them I don't want to do that because I want to teach my people how to do it. If I do it for you, I said, like, if I, if I got all the hires for Vince, what is that going to do for Vince? The only thing it's going to do is hurt him. If I give a man a fish, I feed him for a day. If I teach him how to fish, I feed him for a lifetime. As much as I want, I can, I can, like what me and my son, like sometimes me and my son are working on something and I'm like, dude, if I just do this, it will be done in five seconds. But if I have him do it, we're going to be here for like probably five minutes, 15 minutes. Like, and I don't really got time for this shit. But you know what? I also don't got time for my son to grow up to be a loser. I don't got time to sit here and wait five minutes for him to, to learn how to do it. Let me just do it for you and I'll get it done so we can move on to the next one. No. If I do it for him, we move on to the next one. I win short term. He loses long term, which means we lose long term because the long term goal for me as a father is to turn him into a man that can do shit on his own and don't need me to do his homework for him. I can do the math problem for him. Freaking eight times three is 24. Write it down. Next. What the hell would that do for him? I have to sit here and let him figure out eight. All right, then, then you got to do what? Nine, 10, 11, 12, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 20, 23? No, do it again. Okay. Uh, eight, nine, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, how much longer was that? But now he did it on his own, which is really shorter in the long run. If I give him the answer, guess what I have to do the next time? Give him the answer. And when he's 24 years old, I'm still have to tell him what eight times three is, 24. You guys feel me? I learned a valuable lesson, valuable lesson from, from my aunt. My aunt would do my cousin's homework for him. Growing up, we've seen it. Like, I've seen it. We've seen it. She would do his homework for him. When he grew up, he, he was not smart. He couldn't do anything on his own. And guess what he lacked? He lacked self-confidence. My cousin lacked self-confidence. And he couldn't do shit on his own because his mom did his homework for him, right? And you know what? That made him weak-minded, guys, right? And my, my, my cousin became addicted to heroin. He wanted great, great kids, one of the amazing, beautiful people on earth. And I, and I, and I blame it on his mom. She enabled him and, and she, she did his homework for him and never let him be a man. <clears throat> never let him get the confidence that he needed. She babied him. She wanted to feel important, right? So she was a bad leader. Remember, remember, leaders who develop followers need to be needed. See, she wanted to feel needed as a mother. So she always wanted to make her son um need her so she never let her son you know uh do the homework she never let her son do stuff and then she she ended up raising a follower remember leaders that develop followers need to be needed so she as the mother felt like she needed to be needed so 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 that's how she developed her son and her son grew up to be a follower and that's why when this guy said, hey, come do heroin, he just followed over there and he ended up following the wrong crowd. Leaders that develop leaders need to be succeeded. 
So you, I want to develop my son to be better at math than I ever was. I don't want him to need me to do math. I want him to be better at math than me. I want Gio to be better at hires than me. I want Vince to get better hires than me. You know, but if I do them for him, I'm never going to get that way. So, but if we got to get them, I'll, I'm going to, I'll lace them up, boys, girls. I'll lace them up. I'll start getting hires and building them a little leg over here uh, of people, you know, and I'll get all my personals and just stick them on that leg and we'll show you how, how, how to do it, you know. But I'd rather get my personals and just give them to you guys. I want to get personals and just fund them over to you. But if I got my own team, when I get my personals, I'm just going to fund them over to my team. If you guys aren't getting the hires and you can't handle getting hires and a little bit of ALP, like, I mean, last time I checked, you know, shout out to Josh's team, uh, over 20,000 last week. I think he was number one MGA for the week. Uh, so shout out to Josh's team, you guys over there making a little bit of noise. I, we hear you rumbling a little bit, rumble in the jungle, right? So, uh, but, but a little competitiveness here. We got Vince doing about maybe 20,000. I don't know if your p and said 80,000 for, for an MGA deal. You know, for, for we'll see what it says, if it says 80,000 this month or, or it should be at 100, you know, Vince should be over 100,000 a month as an MGA team. Josh should be over 100,000 a month as an MGA team. Geo should be over 100,000 a month as an MGA team, you know, minimum right now. Um, so, so 100,000 a month is only 25,000 a week, which isn't that much business to handle. You know what I mean? So I, I feel like, you know, we, we definitely aren't overwhelmed by any means. And uh, there's tons of time and money going around to get way more done than we than we, we, we've been getting done. So the, the, the uh, Geo asked me, and, and I think uh, even I was on the phone with Vince when, when we went over this, but for the past four days, um, I've been on uh, SGA meetings for, I probably had 10 hours of SGA meetings over the last two days, over the last two days. And um, do I, I wish I could just give it all to you, but some of it would be, um, it'd be just too much information. So I'm going to just break down for you guys. Okay. Hey, hey, guess how many breaks they gave me? You think I don't give people breaks. You guys think, oh my God, Tommy runs an hour and a half managers meeting in the morning. You know, um, I met with Mike Laramie. He, he ran a four hour training on, on Tuesday. Guess how many minutes of break we got? 17 minute break. I got a seven minute break from 1208 to 1215. And then we got a break from 130 to 140. We had 17 minute worth break in, in four hours. I, I was waiting for him to say, if anybody, he didn't say one time, if anybody needs to go to the bathroom, if you were going to take a lunch break, he didn't say nothing. He just kept going and going and going. He's like, hey, guys, we're a little bit, you know what? Um, we ran over on the last session, so we were supposed to take a break right now. We're just going to run right through it. We're going to power through it, guys, so let's keep it going. All right, next up, we have this. I mean, he's just boom, 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 you know? So, um, and it's all fire. It was all good stuff. I wasn't complaining at all, and 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 uh, all I could say is, man, you know, my my people, that we, that hopefully they don't get mad at me for running a little bit longer sometimes. Because, you know, we're, we're growing right now and we got stuff to talk about. So this is a concern that I used to have with some of my managers. Like some people, some managers, you have, some managers would never meet with their team. OK, and some managers would never even like uh, have anything to go over with their team. They'd never talk. And I would be like. You must not have anything going on in your business. My business is so crazy right now. I need to meet with my team like almost every day. I feel like shit's changing. There's so much stuff going down. There's so many things going on. Like we got to meet. I don't know. Like we have to meet. There's just so much to talk about. There's so much we got to get organized. I got trainees coming in. I got this person get released. I got to help this person. This person last week, they blinked last week. I got to figure out what's going on with them. Like we got stuff going on. Plus we got a game plan for next quarter. Like there's all kinds of stuff going on. And this, uh, this manager over here, you have five minute meetings with your team twice a week. They're like, how do you get everything accomplished in a five minute meeting twice a week with your team? There's just no way. There's just no way not your unless your deal ain't growing, then maybe you don't have nothing to talk about. All right, guys, same shit last week. No, nothing going on. Just let's just try and do better this week. Like, you know, like maybe that's your squad, but hopefully that ain't your squad. Hopefully you got stuff going on where you got. To, and that's when I was coming up in the business. I was always people were always like, you meet, 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 Tommy. You have all kind of meetings. Your meetings are long, blah, blah, blah. You're long winded. And that's true. I am. And I try to cut it down. I think I got a little bit better over the years. OK, um, but. Uh, 
But my, my, my rebuttal to that was that I got shit going on. My deal is fucking blowing up, man. I got office here, here. I, I'm sorry. I got a lot of meeting. I got a lot of stuff to talk about, you know, but I realized still, I got to cut that down because meetings are, you know, they, they get, can get redundant and, uh, and, you know, we don't want to just meet just, just for the heck of meeting. That's why I try to call them huddles. So we can just like huddle up like real quick, get the information and keep it moving, you know? Um, so, so anyways, uh, I got, we met with everybody, man. We met with everybody in the whole entire retention department over the last four days. Okay. I met with Melissa Guest. Melissa Guest is the head of ICM. So she, she went over everything on, on how to read our advance reports, you know, how we have adjustments, how we have you know, uh, RIPs, decline counter offers, all that stuff. Okay. Um, so the business process, she talked about that. So I'll talk about the business process guys. All right. So just so we know how it all works. Okay. Is, is we run Monday to Monday. We all know that we run Monday to Monday, upload business by 9am on Monday. Right. Right. Marvin. 9 a.m. on Monday. <laughs> um, and, then, and then what happens is staff checks over that, that business. And the MGAs should check over the business as well. And I would recommend you as the manager to check over your team's business as well and make sure it's uploaded and good and clean. Then that business has to be sent off to home office and uploaded from RQ by by Wednesday at, at, at 3 30 at the latest. So what we want to do guys and what we need to do is we, we need to upload our business daily to to uh, the agency. And then the agency needs to go through that business pretty much daily and get that business sent to home office daily. So when we write business on Tuesday and Wednesday, we want to upload that Thursday, have that check Thursday. We could send that off Friday if it's good to go. If you need a verification call on that business, that gives us Friday all weekend plus all week next week to get the verification call done. If your app is missing information, um, Jackie can put that in the notes or whoever checks the app, your MGA might even find it. You may find out that your new agent uploaded the zap on Thursday, missing information, and that gives them all day Thursday, all day Friday, and all weekend to go get it. Versus what we're doing, if we're writing apps Tuesday, Wednesday, and we're not uploading them until when? Sunday night, which means we don't get it until Monday. And now Monday, we find out what? The same thing. We find out that the same client is missing the information. And if we were to go out a Thursday morning, we would have Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday to do. We had four extra days. Now we're finding out Monday afternoon or even Tuesday morning. Oh, by the way, application for Ronald Smith, Patrick Sullivan's application is missing information. And you have uh, you have to, it's, it's Tuesday at 10 a.m. You have by Wednesday by 2 p.m. to get it done. So now you give the poor kid 14 hours or 24 hours. He has to go get this thing done stressful for the agent brand new agent he's stressed out now right stressful for staff stressful for you and, and now that the window to get this bit business set and, and done properly is, is is small so that's why the we have to upload the business uh daily daily um stop telling the clients it's going to draft next friday it's going to draft like in 24 to 40 48 hours just get ready just tell them it should draft within 24 to 48 hours. And if it doesn't, it'll draft within the next, you know, definitely by Friday or whatever you want to tell them. But but we got to let them know we're going to be uploading this shit tomorrow. And if it's clean, my 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 staff sending it to home office and they're going to draft your account as soon as it hits home office. We're telling them, oh, it's not going to draft till next Friday. Then guess what? Then I can't upload the business. We can't check it. You're not uploading it. And it's causing these issues. All of our problems that we've been having are been our issues are up front. Once the client gets the policy, they pay for it. You guys aren't getting your policies issued. You're get, you're signing people up and they're getting declined. They're getting withdrawn. They're getting it not, uh, uh, incomplete and they're getting NTO. That's what's happening to the policies. 
which they're not policies, they're applications at that point. You ain't even getting policies issued. Once the policy gets issued, they pay. So it has to be done clean right up front. A lot of that, guys, is uh, pure laziness. Rick Altick said it. He's like, it's lazy. It's lazy. You want to know what it is? It's people not working hard enough. People not working hard enough. You know? That's why Matt Brown's retention's down. Because he was not working hard enough at the beginning. So he would write one deal, and we'd have to send that one deal. And, of course, that one deal wasn't even that good of a deal. And that one deal falls off. It can really affect your retention if you only send one deal a week. That's why I, I don't get that impressed when somebody writes 2,000 off of one sale a week. Okay, you made one sale. What you, what, so what you did this week again? But I wrote 2,000. You made one sale. Three sales a week minimum. Like train your agents to get three sales a week and they'll have higher retention. So, um, upfront chargebacks. Let's see here. They're talking about when is it going to affect your line? Let me find that real quick. So, in the first month, when you sign somebody up, Guys, when you sign somebody up to today, we send the business off, you know, let's say it was, you know, uh, let's say you wrote 10,000 ALP this month. Okay. Got to write this down. You write 10,000 ALP this month. Right. You're on a 65, 60% contract. And then you're on like a 65% advance. All right. How much did they advance you this month? about $3,200 in some change, okay? Which is 65% of your commission. Next month, you know what they advance you when the client pays their second month? I got a chart here. I'm gonna pull it up on my phone as well, but I already know off the top of my head. Second month is what? What do they, what do they uh, advance you second month? Anybody know? 18%. Eighteen percent is your commission paid to you. So in the first two months, what's sixty-five plus eighteen? Eighty-three percent of your first-year commissions get paid to you in the first two months. So when somebody cancels after they paid us. That's a, a big chargeback. That's a chargeback they're gonna hit you with. But the thing is, guys, is if, 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 if you have your clients pay all these months, that's how you're gonna, if, if you sign people up and, and they pay, you're gonna get money released to you fast. That's why you see people in six months getting money released to them. And that's why you see people who have been here for a year and they're not getting money released to them. It's because when, when, when the, so, so, so check this out, right? You signed up 10,000. Let's use these numbers. You signed up 10,000 ALP for the month, right? $3,200 got paid to you that month. That's 65%. You only collected uh, $800 in checks. So the company only got $800, but they paid you out $3,200 right? Month two goes by, right? Month two goes by. Um, you're going to get 18%. That's another $900 that they paid you now. So they're going to pay you another $900 in month two. Now, now that's not going to get paid to you in your weekly commissions. That's money that gets paid to you and credited to your account. And guess what? If your account was clean, it would get released to you. That's why you're not getting release money like you should be. 
And that's why some MGAs, some of you MGAs should be getting more release money at this point, but you have agents on your team that were allowing them to have this bad business. We have uh, the guy paid one month, the company paid you, the company paid me, the company paid the agent one month, 65%, right? The company paid you $3,200, but they only got 800 and then they never got another nickel. Where do you think they're going to get the other $2,400 that they paid you? They're going to get the $2,400 when your other clients that are still on the books pay their second month, that 18% goes to pay back all that other shit that fell off. The worst is if they pay two months and then cancel. If they pay two months and then cancel, you just got your accounts credited 83%. And the company only got uh, two payments, which is like less than 20%. So the company got 20%, but they paid you 80% after two months. So you're negative 60% on that money if they cancel. We cannot have policies that pay one month and never pay another month again. We can't have policies that pay two months and never pay another month again. They have to pay a minimum of four months. So when you sign someone up for life insurance, they should pay for this for how long? For their life. So like the company's pretty cool about it. They're like, all right, you're supposed to have them pay for life, but at least have them pay four months. That's like me getting married to someone and then, and, then, and then after four months, they want to get a divorce. Like, what are you talking about? We just said we're going to do this for life. And now four, we don't even make it four months. We must have been way off when we had this conversation. Like, we're way off on this one. So Rick Altick said it the best, guys. I'm trying to give you guys just the best, okay? I could go on and on about all these people. Melissa Guest, Mike Laramie, Jennifer Lowe, Amy Gage. Uh, geez, we had so many quality people. James Morgan, Melissa Guest. We have so many different people. Jennifer Hunt, Policy Issue, all these people, okay? Talk to us. It was all kind of fire. But let me just tell you this. Rick Altig has been in the business for 40 years. He's 60 years old, okay? This past week, yes, they did over $4 million in ALP. And Fred Hedaya took a shot at us today. Did you guys hear the shot he took at us? He said, Rick Alden did $4 million last week. You guys won't even do that this year. And believe me, I wanted to jump on there and unmute this thing and be like, yeah, we're going to do $5 million this year, bro. Watch. Just watch. Don't be doubting. He thinks we're only going to do three. That's what Freddie tells me. Because he sees our hires. He's like, based upon your hires, like even if you really kick it in the gear, man, I could see you doing three. I'm like, we're doing five million, bro. He's like, watch. So like even him, he's, I don't know if he's doing it just to bust my balls or just to get me fired up or to, but or if he's just, he's being real at some level of the game though, because if we do don't turn our hires on, we ain't going to do no, nothing. We'll do 3 million this year. So we definitely got to turn that, 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 that the hires on. But the point of it is guys, uh, Rick Altig, he gets on the call and he gives the best fire. Okay. So here's some stuff he, he gave me. Okay. You guys ready from the best of the best. He made a million dollars last week. We said he made a million dollars last week, last week. But it made, made, made a million dollars in one single week. This guy. This is who this is who I get to talk to, right? He talk, come on, he goes like, he goes, number one, how many policies do you have in force right now? You should know that number. That's on your P and P if you guys want to find it. Our agency has 1250 in force starting from scratch my my i personally uh i don't even know how many i have i could go look go back and look but i got like thirty thousand or something crazy like that from the last 12 years and and like uh thirty thousand and uh like 
I don't know, 30 million or something like that. I got on the books. Well, your residual income is uh, 1% of whatever you got on the books, guys. So, so, so like, well, for me, for when well, you're a producer, it's higher. Okay. In leadership, in leadership, guys, the way the renewals work is, is you get a 1% override uh, when you're an SA over your team on renewals. You get a 1% override when you're a GA on renewals over your team. You get a 2% override when you're an MGA and you get a 1% override when you're an RGA. So if I'm an RGA and my team's writing a bunch of business, whatever business they write, I'm going to get 1% renewal on all that business. If I'm an MGA, whatever my team writes, I'm going to do 2% renewal on all that business. So if you're a, a high level like Geo, Geo is going to be, he's going to be a high level RGA slash MGA. Geo is going to be doing $100,000 a week from his RGA team plus $30,000 a week from his MGA team, right? So when you blend that together on $30,000 a week, he's going to build 2%. But on 100,000 a week, he's going to build 1%. So I always blended it at one and a quarter. So when I figured out my renewals for myself, I just did one and a quarter, right? So now let's do Geo's renewals. You want to know, I'll do Geo's renewals on two, two different things real quick. So the next 10 years, we don't grow at all. And you just do a, a 100,000 a week. That's 5 million a year, guys. So on his RGA team, you're, you are doing 100,000 a week. So on faith, your RGA team is doing 100,000 a week, right? Okay. And, and over the course of the year, your RGA team does 5 million. So over the next 10 years, your, your RGA team does 50 million, right? 50 million. And um, over the next 10 years, out of that 50 million, 60% is still on the books, okay? Our goal agency-wide is 70%. Company average is 62 just so you guys know, our goal is 70% 13 month plus retention on business. 13 month plus retention on business, 70%, okay? The company is 62. This scenario, we're gonna use 60. So what's 60% of 50 million? It's about, 30 mil and then take 1% of that is what 300,000, right? So that's 200, uh, that's 25,000 a month. So you make 300 grand a year off of that. Now you're also an MGA and your MGA deal is doing 30 grand a week. 30 grand a week is 1.5 million a year. 1.5 million a year for 10 years is 15 million. But on this 15 million, you're getting 2%. So 2% of 15 million is what? You're going to like this. What is it? 300, right? 180,000. Oh, it's 180,000. Yeah. Because you got you to take out the 50% what we did before. Oh, that's right. That's right. Okay. Yes. Okay. So yeah. So so um. So it's one hundred and eighty thousand because it goes down to nine, 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 nine hundred, nine, nine million. I got it. Okay. So it's one hundred eighty thousand, which is another fifteen grand a month. So you're going to make one hundred eighty grand a year off your MGA renewals, and you'll make uh three hundred grand a year off of your RGA renewals, and that's forty grand a month. That's four hundred and eighty thousand dollars a month in residual income, okay? Just to show you guys how to figure it out real quick, you know? Um, but what you could do is you could look at your PMP, like guys, what I did, I looked at my PMP and I had like 20 million on the books, okay? Because on your PMP, it shows you how many policies you have enforced and it shows you how much ALP you have enforced on your PMP. He's, and you know what's funny is, is he told this to me uh, yesterday. Rick Altig did, guys. But I swear to you, nobody ever told this to me. 
This is something I swear to you, I've always looked at because I'm a very simple person. And in my mind, I was thinking this, follow me guys, think about this. I'm thinking residual income, you get residual income when people have life insurance and, and they're paying their premiums, right? So what I need to do is I need to have as many policies on the books as possible paying the, the most amount of premiums as possible. You know, like whoever has the most clients on the books and whoever has them paying the most premiums is going to be getting the most residual income. So I would always look, and you know what I found out? Uh, after a couple of years, guys, I had a couple MGAs, you know, like, like Mike Clemente, you know, he had like 3 million on the books. He was getting three grand a month, you know? Matt Diolas had eight million on the books. He was getting eight, eight grand a month. Chuck Ferrari had 3.6 million. He was getting 3,600 a month. Brody had 27, 2.7 million. He was getting 2,700 a month. I start to learn these trends I, on my own. I figured this out on my own. I learned that it's basically 1%. And, and if you're a producer, it's more. If it's all on an MGA, it's more. Worst case is always more. 1% is the lowest, you know? So for you guys, that's an easy thing to just think about. I need to get a lot of policies on the books and I need to get a lot of ALP on the books. And then the more I have, the more residual income I'm going to get, right? Well, um, so, so, so let's, let's keep going with what he said. So here's what he said. Rick Altick said this. He said, bad business causes bad quality. He said, guys, I like to cook. I like to cook, he said. He said, they, the family, people come over to my house almost every night for dinner. And what I learned is, is that good food comes from good ingredients. He's like, you know what happens? When I cook good food, you know what? It tastes, it tastes good. Because I'm using good, if I use good ingredients and I cook good food, you know how it tastes? Tastes good comes out tasting good but you know that when you have to put a bunch of salt and and pepper and sugar and all kind of spices you have to really you know why they have to put all that stuff on it and dress it up it's because they're using bad ingredients he said i've been learning to cook you know rick altick doesn't do anything small so he cooks with the finest ingredients. I could just imagine what this dude uses, you know, the stuff we probably never even heard of before. And he, he probably learned from the best chefs on earth of how to cook stuff naturally to make them taste so good without using no like preservatives and additives. You see what I'm saying? And, and he said, that's this business. If you put in good business, you're going to have good quality. Just like if you cook with good food, it's going to be good quality meal. He said, so, so um, you have to know the math on the quality, guys. So this is the conversation you have to have with your people when they come in the door all the time, okay? Is, is if you made 10 sales a month at 1,000 ALP, then you would write 10,000 ALP for the month. So you'd maybe write about 2,500 a week. OK, what all you need to do, guys, all you need to do is we need to make sure that all 10 deals stay on the books. That's all we got to do. He said, so if you write 10 deals this month, all you got to do is just make sure that all those 10 deals that you wrote, that they all stay on the books. And he said, now, the thing is, is, is if you lose one of those deals, you're not going to be at 100% now. You're going to go from 100 to what? To 90%. Okay? If you go from, if you lose another deal, then you're going to go from 90% to 80%. If you lose three deals, if you lose another deal, so the difference between this, this 80, if you lose one more, you're going to be at 
And the difference between 70% and 80%, that's, that's like being a hero or being a zero. If you want to talk about being, uh, you know, on, on a lonely road, try and be at 80, 70% retention. He said, he goes like this, he could go, the, the, the difference is basically, you know, when you're at 80%, you're fantastic. When you're at 70%, you're like scum. So you can go from being scum to fantastic, literally over one deal. Because what's the difference between being at 70 and 80%, guys? What's the difference? That's one deal. So you're literally one deal away. So you know what to do? Just don't submit that deal. You should never submit that deal. Don't submit it. He said, you ever see anybody that's fat and overweight? This is what he said. He said, this is Rick Altick. So he said, he said, he said, you want to know why? He said, because they, they put the, who put, who put that food in your mouth is what he said. And he stole this from me because I used to say this shit before. I never heard anybody say this, but me, I swear to God. But who put that food in your mouth is what he said. He said, who did it? You did it. Like, who wrote that business is what he said. Who submitted the business? Who wrote it? Who called the client? Who pitched it? Who sold it? Who wrote the application? You did it. You know, the people that need to reinstate business. He goes like this, you know, people that are on a diet, people that are on a diet are the ones that have that, that are fat and overweight. That's why they have to be on a diet. The people that reinstate and why are they fat and overweight? Because they eat the bad, they eat the wrong stuff. They're putting the wrong stuff in. So the people that are, um, that are, that do, who, who does reinstatements? It's like the people that with bad retention. Who are the people with bad retention? The ones that put the bad business in. You put bad food and you get fat, you get fat, got to go on a diet. Put bad business in, you get bad retention, got to get bad retention, got to start doing reinstatements. He said, we don't do reinstatements. I don't do reinstatements. I just don't, I don't focus on reinstatements. I just focus on doing business right up front and then I don't have to waste time. Think about how much time it takes us to do reinstatements. We should be out helping new clients and we're back there fixing old clients problems that should have done right the first time. And he said, if you don't have time to do it right the first time, then how are you going to have time to do it, go back and do it right again? So this is what he said. He said, who put the food in your house in the business? He said, so let me ask you guys this. Everybody be honest. Raise your hand, okay? You know, he said, I'll pull, he said, I'll pull one of my guys aside. So, you know, if you want to just pull somebody aside, right? You know, if you want to just talk to them on their own. But, you know, I'll ask this to you guys. He said, have you ever sent in a deal that was sick, like the client was a little sick or, you know, was a little off? Have you guys ever sent in where the person like wasn't healthy? Anybody here ever do that? Right. He said, stop turning in sick people. What are you doing? It's up to you. He said, don't turn. Why would you turn in the sick people? The reason you're turning in the sick people is because you're not working hard enough. If you would have had five good deals, you wouldn't have sent that bad deal. If you had, had two other good deals, you wouldn't have sent that one bad deal. He said, look at the report. And then he'll go, like, he'll pull up the person's report. And, and he'll find out, he'll say, yeah, look, you have declines, you have incompletes, and you have NTOs. Do you want to know why somebody gets declined, guys? Because they're not healthy. Stop signing up sick people. Do you want to know why somebody gets incompleted? It's because they're not healthy. It means there's something wrong with them, and the, the underwriters needed more information. And they never got the information, so they didn't complete the application. And that's all because why? Because they're not healthy, because you're signing up sick people. He said, you ever get an NTO? You know why you get an NTO? It's because you're signing up sick people. If they're healthy, there would never be an NTO. There'd never be a policy mod. 
if you did the application properly and you filled it all, all right up front and they were healthy, there would never have been a, a policy mod on this person. It would have been issued standard. The reason you're getting NTO is because there's policy mods you're not placing. Because why? Because they're signing up sick people. He said, stop signing up sick people. It's up to you. Just, just, just stop doing that. That's it. Just stop doing that. He literally had a conversation with somebody and told them that, and that they want and had the highest retention ever. He's like, it's, it's simple. It's simple. That's how simple it is. And that's why he's so good. He said, and, and he says like, yes, guys, just do this. He said, you, you, you know, go out there five days a week and give four presentations a day and see 20 people. He said, if you stop turning in sick, sick people, all right, he said, if you do this, everybody will be happy and they'll make money. They'll want to get promoted. They'll get promoted. He said, so if, if you turn in not sick people, if you turn in good people, your people are going to be here longer. They're going to get renewals. They're going to, they're going to be healthier. Their accounts are going to be healthier. If you turn in healthy people, your accounts are healthier. You know, healthy people equals your healthy accounts. Sick people equal sick accounts. That's why your accounts are sick. Returning, you know, bad business essentially. So, so he's he's saying that, but then they'll they'll work harder. They'll be happier. They'll make more money. They'll get promoted, and then they'll help recruit, train, and teach and develop other people. And that's how you have a good, healthy, growing organization. So he said, honestly, just don't do it. Just don't do it. Just don't eat the bad food, and you have a healthier organization. You know, don't put, don't eat the bad, don't take the bad business, don't write the bad business, don't teach the bad business. In fact, teach people not to write the bad business, teach them how to find it, scope it out, and teach them how to do it right, is what he was saying, you know. So he said, right now, we're only one or two cells away from having bad retention. You're only one or two cells away. So the question is, like, and he goes back, now, guys, all of us that raise your hand, like, have you ever done that? Have you ever sent in that bad business? He reminds him, he says it again, he'll say, so, remember, so remember, have you ever sent bad business in Joe? Like you said, hey, here's it. stop doing it. Stop, just stop it. Just stop the bad business. And he just kept saying it over and over. I can't tell you how, how. So, so then he goes like this, he goes like this, check this out. You want to take it deeper? This is Rick Altig, man. He's, he's very intellectual, he's deep. So he goes like this with his people. He'll, he'll, listen, he will mind he will mind screw you. He'll mind F you. You know, mind, mind he'll, you won't even know it. He'll say something to you. Three days later, it'll hit you when you're driving down the road. Like, oh, shit. Damn, I got to pull over for a minute and pray. Like, that's how he, he comes at you, man. He'll hit you with some good stuff. So anyways, this is Rick Alt. He goes like this. He goes, do you live on your whole weekly paycheck? Because you should only be living on half of your advance check. The other half is for taxes, retirement, savings, and vacation. The reason why you have bad retention is because you're living on your whole paycheck. He's like, so, so what happens is you're not working. You're not working because you're living off your whole paycheck. If you were living off of half your paycheck, think about it, right? If you need 500 bucks to live and you make, and you write, and you make 500 bucks, then they're, that's why they're only working that hard. But if you need to make a thousand bucks because you have to live off of 500 and save 500, you're going to work harder. He said, people are not working hard enough because they live off their whole paycheck. Well, well, you shouldn't be living off of your whole paycheck. You should be living off of half of your paycheck. The other half has to go towards taxes, savings, retirement, and vacations. So what's happening is you're, you're not working hard. And because you're not working hard, you're not submitting that many applications. And because you don't have that many applications, you have low retention. So the reason you have low retention is this. So he goes like this. He goes, have you guys, let me ask, has, have, have you guys ever seen someone who, um, who couldn't work because they were disabled physically 
or mentally. Have you guys ever had that? You know, you see somebody where they just, they, they couldn't work. Well, well, you can work. Well, you can work, Joe. And you have the ability to do this. So what's stopping us? What's the hold up? I mean, that's what he, he'll smile. Like, have you ever met anybody who couldn't work before? Like they were disabled physically or mentally? Yeah. And they wanted to, but they couldn't. Well, you can work. So what's holding us up? <laughs> it's like, that's what he says. The reason you're not working is he said, you turn on. Oh, and, that, and that's the reason you're not working is because you're living on your whole paycheck. And then you're turning in bad stuff. So you need to see four people a day, five days a week. It's your decision what your retention will be. So I thought that was good, good stuff right there. And uh, Zip, Zipper gave us some good stuff, which I think I went over that already. The chargeback. If a client cancels in their first year, there's a chargeback. That's, that's your renewals. That's taking your renewals. You want to hear what Steve Greer had to say, the CEO of the company? Here. Where's he at? Well, um, first of all, last week was uh, like the biggest week in company history, he said, which is great. Um, let me ask you guys this real quick. Uh, I was going to ask the MGAs, but I'll ask you guys. Uh, on our leads, child safe leads, will kit leads, do you want the date on it or not? When they got the kits? Because some, some, some agencies were talking like, well, after they get old, I don't want the date on them anymore because then agents see the date and they're like, ah, that was filled out six months ago, you know? But on the other end, if you get the date on it and it says like last week, it can get someone fired up. Yeah. And you I hear your phone calls. I know we say the date on a lot of them too. Like, oh, I just saw you filled this out the other day, you know? So I don't know. Yeah. Tell, tell me, I feel like ours are so fresh that if we put the date, it's not even going to matter, dude. I honestly don't even think. If, if we were getting three year old child safe kits, then I probably wouldn't put the date on it just to discover yeah. the agents. But ours are so fresh. I don't think it'd be a problem. I think it's a good thing. Yeah. What do you guys think? Good? Move it on, yeah. Yeah, move it on. Okay, cool, cool. I, I honestly thought the same too, but I, if, if this was uh, two years ago, I would have been like, oh my God, that's amazing. Take those dates off, <laughs> you know? So anyways, we'll keep them on. Just wanted to run that by you. Uh, good stuff on that. Um, dude, the pipeline management is so huge because of this here. We spend so much time and money on recruiting and actually we don't, we can spend a lot more to be honest with you, but the people that do, it takes a lot of time and money to get a hire. And when they get hired, if we don't get them in the door and code them, they don't turn into a profit for us at all. It actually becomes a loss instead of a profit, right? So you're either going to have a loss or a profit. And if you're able to hire people and get them coded and not lose them, you're going to be much more profitable. And it makes a big difference if you squeak these percentages out. So, you know, we got to make sure that we um, uh, have a good pipeline management system. And uh, they, he recommended to have a pipeline manager. So each person having their own pipeline manager. Um, when people are hired, he sends them a, they send them a text message congratulating them and telling them that this is going to be our daily check-in. Congratulations, but on a daily basis at eight o'clock every day, I need you to check in with me 
on your update. And literally he has a list and at eight o'clock at night, he has to get these texts and, and anybody that doesn't text at eight o'clock at night, they get a call the next day at eight o'clock in the morning. He has the highest hire to code ratio in the company. It's like less than two to one. Ours is like four to one, his is two to one. And he's doing this. So I want to give it to you guys. Like, why would, why would I get this fired? You guys are out there busting your butt trying to get these hires and get these codes. And if he has a system for it and it works, like, why wouldn't I give it to us? So you can just boom and jump on and implement it and not even think, you know, and just run that, run that play. So, you know, now he'll do this for like, uh, um, do it for four to seven days. And then um, if longer than 72 hour rule, Okay, so so then he says that if uh, if they don't get back to him within 72 hours, they're done. He said he don't even deal with them anymore. He, he lets them know they're out. And but by doing that, it don't matter because he's still getting two to one, you know, so it's just like letting people know that you can't get into the pipeline and, and just sit around, you know. Uh, and make and it, it just gets them going and it works. It says just it just works. You know, the daily check in Monday through Saturday, not Sunday. So every day, 8 a.m., they text into this group text message with him and his manager, the pipeline manager, you know, and um, and that's it. And he said the, the issue is, is, is when you hire people, if you don't give them the expectations when you're hiring them, that's where the issue begins. But when you hire them, if you say, okay, here's what is next. Here's what we expect of you. Here's what you could expect of me. And here's what I expect of you. I expect you to, you know, be doing this. I expect you to message me every day, eight o'clock at the latest, once a day, every me an update. I expect this, I expect clear communication. If you call me within 24 hours, I'm going to get back to you. If I call you within 24 hours, I expect you to get back to me as well. I got the 24 hour rule with calls, text, and emails. So as a side note, guys, that got to be calls, text, and emails. We got to have a 24-hour rule with all communication, not just clients. So in management, we have clients and we have team and we have staff. So if your clients call you, text you, or email you, you have 24 hours to get back to them. Um, if I find out that a client calls at the office and says, I've been calling Jay Vaughn for weeks and messages and he never gets back to me, you're going to be written up for that. And we're going to have to take, take you off of, off of whatever lead type that is. And there'll be repercussions for it. We're not going to uh, have agents. And then, and then if you're in management and this is a, a consistent issue on your team, because your agents are not being responsive because they're not accessible and, and being responsible, then, uh, then we'll have issues with, with that as well. We just won't be able to run leads. We'll get written up and all kinds of stuff. We don't have nothing like that going on, but I just want you guys to know that, that, that that's a way to handle that situation. But now uh, you have agents, agents call you. We got 24 hours to get back to them and help them with their problems, you know? And if an agent comes to me and he's like, I've been calling Vince and he won't answer my calls. He won't get back to me. Like, all right, well, how would you like to work with Casey then? You know, and I'll just put him on Casey's team and make him work with somebody who wants to work with him. Then if you can't get back to your team. And then the third thing is staff. Okay. Staff. If staff is contacting you, with any for a text, phone call, or email, it's important. So we it, it, and it's redundant and it's a lot of stuff. I don't like emails either, guys. I was worst at them when I started. I was horrible with emails, you know. But you got to treat emails uh, today. The, the the higher you climb in business, the more prevalent, the more important uh, emails are going to be for you. So you can't hide them. Get used to them because it's only going to be more and more and more emails the more that you do this business. And you got to be good with them. You got to be quick with them. And get them handled and try not to put off till tomorrow when you can get done today. So um, take time to handle emails on a daily basis, guys, on a daily basis. And, and that'll help you with stress and anxiety. And you'll uh, make a lot more money that way. And your business will move a lot faster. You know, I hate doing stuff um, this week that I should have did last week. You know, like if, if, if they say, hey, Tommy, we need you to send a picture. And they send it to me on Thursday. I, I want to get that picture sent, you know, on, on Thursday uh, or Friday. Cause you know what? Cause I don't want to be Monday the next week, still doing something from last week. Cause now I'm behind, like, I'm never going to get ahead. I'm actually, you ever, you ever know like, you're behind like that's 
being behind. I don't like being behind. I want to be ahead. And what happens is we don't do our emails and get stuff handled. We end up doing stuff next week that should have been done last week. And the whole organization is now a freaking week behind. The whole organization is moving slow instead of fast. So these are just type of small little things that can help you, you know, pick up and, and move, move, move a little, with a little bit more speed, you know? Um, so anyways, that, 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 that. And what did Mr. Steve Greer say? All right, all right. Um, no deal is worth the deal. He's repeated that again. So sometimes we wanna send a deal up and it's not a good deal. It could be even like considered fraudulent, right? And you don't wanna send that one deal because if you lose, if you get caught or something happens, that one deal can cost you this whole entire deal forever. And you'll never be with American Income for the rest of your life. And I, I don't know any other better company like that. So the point is, you don't want to risk it, you know, or risk your, you know, um, name, you know, for that. Uh, da, da, da. He always would say, you know, you guys probably don't even know this, but Mike Laramie is the head of retention for our company. So he said, if you have a question, just say WWMD, what would Mike do? So um, for you guys, you don't really probably know what Mike would do. And I don't even know what Mike would do half the time. So what I do is ask him. So if there's any issues that we have, guys, I have the head of retention. He's my homie. You know what I'm saying? The number one guy of retention in the company is like my dog. You know what I'm saying? Like he came to visit me in Pittsburgh and I gave him all my juice. You know, he was one of the top RGAs in the company. When I was number one, he was like number three or four or five. He was like a top five RGA in the company. Now he's head of retention. So we came up into business together. And um, basically, if we have any issues at all, I will go directly to him and get the answer for us. OK, so if you have any any retention questions, you know, and you're not sure what would Mike do? Would he trial it? Would he no prod it? Whatever that may be, we're gonna we're gonna call Mike and ask him what he would do. So we don't even have to guess. Okay, we got straight from the source. So I want you to know that. Uh, Steve Greer repeated something I heard 46 times. He said this. He said, "You can't send down bad business to home office." <laughs> so I uh, like, all right, I'll repeat that. Um, are you thinking short term? Or are you thinking long term? Uh, and then, and then here's what we need to have on your reports. Okay, everybody knows this, but you need to know this. Okay, on your report, you should never have more than two to three percent decline ever for the year, for the week, for the month, whatever. Two to three percent decline. Okay, withdrawals is a cancel before it gets issued. Can't be more than two to three percent. That's overselling or not clearly explaining things in the home, not solidifying. Um, incompletes, one to two percent. NTOs, one to two percent. Cancellations, two to three percent. I'll repeat them. Declines, two to three percent should be your total book, two to three percent. Withdrawals, two to three percent. Incompletes, one to two. NTOs, one to two. Cancels, two to three percent. He said, um, the silent killer, the silent killer of, of, of agents and managers and people's careers, okay, are bad accounts and NSFs. Anything that affects the upfront money, things that cause upfront chargebacks. Well, anything that doesn't pay the first year is going to have an upfront chargeback at some level. Like even if the client pays nine months, you're going to still get hit with a chargeback because you got paid pretty much at, at, at nine months you got paid pretty much like 90 some percent premiums, but the company only got like 70%. So you're still going to owe back. So he said that 
anything that affects upfront money, which basically is any cancellations within the first year. Okay, I think I went over this with Geo and Vince yesterday, but here's, here's the business process again, guys, okay? Is we're gonna send business down. We're gonna send business down, okay? We submit business, it's your submit. After you submit the business, um, there's gonna be any, any adjustments to it for your gross. So you might submit 10,000, but your gross might be 11,000. Why would that be? How could you submit 10,000, but you gross 11,000? Any advance adjustments that may happen, which can be a trial coming through, right? It could be a, 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 a policy that uh, the ALP got adjusted higher they came back smoker rates or something and then it went through and now they, they have to add and adjust. So, so you can submit 10, but 11 can show up gross. Okay. Now also guys, you can submit 10,000 and you can gross 9,000 for instance, right? And that will be because of uh, anything that got no prodded any returned initial premiums and any uh, verification calls, uh, any adjustments that got a hit, it'll take that off and your weekly gross will be less. Now, here's the point guys, as soon as that gross number hits, that's your exposure, she said. They call it your exposure. That means that you're liable for that. As soon as you get paid on that gross, if it showed you did 50,000 gross this month, then that's 50,000 of gross business that you're exposed on. And you got to make sure now that 50,000 all pays out. So, so then after you have your gross, then what happens? You have your submit. And then after submit, your gross. Your gross is what we get paid on. And then after your gross, we have what? Our net. Here's what that means. It takes your gross minus anything that came off as far as declines, withdrawals, incompletes, NTOs, or cancels, the five ways you lose business. So you might gross 9,000. You submitted 10, but you gross nine because you had a, an advance adjustment. So you gross nine. And then this week, you had an NTO for, for $1,500, so your net business is $7,500 for the week. So that's how those, those numbers flow. Now, you might see on your reports, there's going to see something that says uh, lost business, and it's going to see something that shows when you see lapsed, okay, you're going to see lapsed at first exposure. And then you're going to see lapsed. What's the difference? What's the difference? Okay. If you see on your report, your lapsed business, if it says lapsed at first exposure, that means that it lapsed after only one premium got paid. This is important to you know, knowing this because that's, that's probably the worst exposure you can have. So they're showing this now, which they never showed this before, is your lapse after first exposure means they only paid one month. And then you'll have another column that'll just be lapse. That means they paid two or more premiums. If it's under lapse, they paid two or more premiums. If it's lapse after first exposure, they only paid one premium. Um, 
no production is, is something I got to touch on with you guys. So you know how to handle no production. All right. We can no production a deal before it gets issued. As long as it didn't get issued, we can no production it. And then it'll never count on our gross. It'll never count on our net. We'll take it off of everything. And here's what happens now. No production means that we don't get any credit for production up front. So we don't get paid in advance and we don't get paid a bonus. But what they do is when the client pays those premiums, we get paid those commissions. So what's cool is when they pay that first premium, we're going to get 65% paid to us. It's just going to go straight to paying our, our, our accounts. And it's going to go towards your release money. So when you know production something, the only thing that you don't get is you don't get the bonus. You get everything else. And you don't, you'll get that 65%. You just don't get the 65 in an upfront advanced paycheck. When that policy gets issued and that client pays their first premium, you're going to get paid 65%. And that's going to be credited right to your, your release money account. If your accounts are clear, that, you'll get paid that. And then when they pay the second month, they're going to credit the 18%. And then from every month after that, it's like 1%. You know, I can pull it up again for you guys real quick. So um, just to let you guys know, the first month is 65, second month is 18. And then check this out. The third month is 3%. Thir three, three the fourth month is 2.5%. The fifth month is 1.6%. One, 1. Then it goes 1. 1.5, 1. 1.4, 1. 1.3, 1. 1.2, 1. 1.7, 1.08. And the last month is 1%. So, so after the first two months, guys, they don't really credit your account much more after that. They literally paid us 83% after the first two months and almost 90% after the first four months. So just so you know how the no productions work, we, we, we won't get a bonus on that, but we are getting all that commission gets paid to us. So it still gets put into our accounts, which, which is huge to know. Because to be honest, guys, I actually thought at one point that no production means no production at all. Like as soon as we put no production on it, it's basically like, oh, man, so nobody's going to make a nickel on that ever. So basically we did all that work, signed them up. The company's going to get all these premiums, but they don't got to pay anybody any money. The company probably loves when people do no productions, you know? I was like, the company going to love that. They don't pay no money out, but they get all the premiums, right? Well, I found out that's not their fa the fact. They actually pay out. They pay out soon when they get those premiums, which is, which, which is nice. Um, on verification calls, guys, if we have uh, adverse things on verification calls, we can add a no production to it on a verification call. It'll save us. If a client, if home office calls and the client goes to them like, oh, you know, I was thinking about canceling. Well, here's what we got to do. I need to get that verification call to Drew. And Drew has to call that client and try and save that deal. If Drew can't save that deal, we need to hurry up and put a no production on it before the client calls home office. If the client calls home office and they cancel on their own, then it's going to affect our retention. But if the client calls us and we're able to call home office, we can put no production on it and it won't affect our retention. That's a huge play, guys. Huge play. So if we see any verification calls, I know it sucks that they said they want to cancel, but you know what sucks is when they say they want to cancel and then it affects our retention. Mm. I'd rather they, they cancel, but it don't affect our retention. So it doesn't sting as bad. Okay. As bad, you know? So that's, 
that's what the up that's what the upfronts that's what the uh, no PRDs and um, there was one other thing that they said about these no PRDs. Uh, but I, I, I okay. What was your question? Hey, oh, shit. You didn't hear me. Sorry, I, I didn't want to stop you either. But um, I was seeing some no productions be sent out on things that were like you know older than just the first couple of weeks. So or, I thought we were only allowed to put them on before underwriting and stuff like that. What is the date that you can put no productions on things? Is it any time? Any. Well, you can put a no production on anything at any time, obviously. Um, uh, but um, at, you, you have to do it before it gets issued, before it gets issued to the client. So, you know. Um, so within like the first week. No, but yeah, well, no, before the policy gets issued. Before underwriting is done. So six to eight weeks then. Yeah. Yeah. While it's in underwriting. Okay. Yep. Yep. While it's an underwriting, before it gets issued to the client. Okay, great. Good to know. Thank you. Yeah. I, now we had some situations where people wanted wanted to put a no production on a policy, and then it came back, and uh, they were like, "Sorry, this policy's already been issued, and we couldn't do it. It was too late." So that's why we want to do it beforehand to beat that. All right. Um. Well, uh, guys, I don't want to keep us any longer. Uh, next time we meet, I will give us, uh, you know what? Not the next time that we meet. It's going to be separate, okay? Uh, we cannot combine all this retention stuff into our leadership huddle. Um, this is going to have to be a separate leadership huddle um, that I'd like to do with us on either a Friday morning or a Wednesday morning uh, where I can take these eight hours and kind of just cut them down into like an hour and a half and give us the most important stuff so that you guys have all the juice on retention for, for forever. So you just have all the stuff that, that I got. And, and um, I'm thinking probably like two Wednesdays from now, not next Wednesday, but the following Wednesday, uh, we'll probably just cancel the FBLA, have them hop in and just do a quick manager's retention training uh, on everything. Um, so we'll, we'll, we'll do that. And, uh, and if I could just break and end here, guys, um, you know, we sent off the business yesterday, uh, check, make sure those Mark Madness brackets are good. I think they were good. We had a couple close calls, but I think we're, the announcements were all right. If there are anything off, let me know. I want to get the real announcements out. Um, what do we do with, uh, what do we do with Ashley versus Matt Brown? Man? Oh my God. <laughs> you ain't happy. Well, Geo, Geo knows. Hold on, Jackie got an announcement. So, all right. I do. I just have a couple things that I wanted to go over. I love all your info, Tommy. Um, I just want to touch base with you guys on the coding and hiring practices and where, like, I, I can see from my end, because I look at everybody's stuff, where you guys are, are missing some key factors. You know, I've been with Tommy. April will be six years for me being under Tommy. And Tommy had a very great plan in place for tracking our hires, how to do the process. But a lot of people are straying away from that. And we're not tracking these people well enough. Um, you guys all have your pipeline. Um, in, in hiring, we need to third interview. Illinois, you know, we can't ask them if they have a criminal record. So when you hire Illinois, you need to onboard them right away. As soon as you send them that application, you are then allowed to say, hey, they're going to ask you about your criminal record. You, I can help you with that right now. And then you get the pre-approval right then and get it taken care of. Otherwise, if they tell you no, home office is going to come back and say, hey, we need a pre-approval. Any other state, you should ask them during the interview if they have a criminal record. And if they do, get the pre-approval and then move them through the old. We need to go back to the old process. Josh, Gio, Drew, Casey, you guys are all aware of Tommy's hiring practice. You know, you hire you get them enrolled if they're not licensed. 
you get them in the program, you get them moving forward to pass their test. Once they pass their test, then you're doing their agent onboarding. And then we're waiting for the agent number coming back. And then they are going into training class. A lot of you are putting agents into training class from the beginning and they're not, they're missing all these processes. And then you're running to me, Jack, I, I need, I need an email for them. I need this. And I'm looking, I'm like, okay, they don't have an agent number. They don't, they're not coded. So how are they on the release list? So we have to go back to the essential of tracking people and knowing where they're at and making sure that you're moving them forward in the right steps and not just trying to race to the end and you have them so excited to start. And then you have these new agents that are sitting there waiting for two weeks because you didn't follow the steps waiting on an agent number. So that part is important, and I'm going to send out an email that has all these steps listed and how, how this process goes. That way, you can give them to the new FAs that are here and our new GAs, and that way, we are actually working by the process and meeting our goals, because when you don't work the process, that's why at the end of the month, everybody's calling me, hey, I, I need an agent number and because I'm not going to have my codes this month. And I, working with Tommy for so long, I had to learn the I can't process, like that, that doesn't apply in our world. What I will tell you is uh, I'm going to do my best to try to help you. But honestly, at that point, I my hands are tied. I can't help you. Um, and I've always said this to you guys too, your lack of planning is not fair to put an emergency on me. So we have to plan. And by planning, that means tracking everybody correctly. And then the second thing that I want to touch on, and um, I, um, I mentioned, mentioned this in my workshop that I did on retention. Um, as you all know, I have been um, copy and pasting errors that are in apps and so forth and making sure that the agent is on it, the, all of their hierarchy and Tommy. And I'm not doing it to be like to pick on anybody. And I tell you guys that individually when you email me back and apologize, I, I, I'm not looking for that. I'm not looking to, oh, you did a bad. What I'm trying to do is point out to you areas that need fixed because they're chronic problems. Now, in my workshop, I told everybody the most important tool that I work by, and I'm going to show you what I work by. I work by this book. It's an underwriting. It, it's the field writer's under, underwriting manual. It's that big. I printed the whole thing. I had it tabbed, you know, flash sheet, auto trials, and I, I told everybody, if you print this, you could easily, while you're writing the app, it's a glance. Oh, you have, um, you had gas, here's an example. You had gastric bypass surgery six months ago. If you look on the, the page, they're alphabetized. You can easily find gastric bypass bullet and see Oh, yeah, you know, unfortunately, I can't write your policy today because there's a six month wait because of your surgery. But, you know, I can come back and write you, but we can write your family now. So you're not submitting these applications that are auto declined. Mm -hmm. The auto trial list, I mean, that is, that's simple. That's one page and that's everything that is an automatic trial. So then you're not submitting standard business because like at the end of the week, Tommy, he was like, Zach, what's our numbers? And I'm pulling numbers and he is like, we should have 70,000 standards submit. And I'm like, unfortunately, Tommy, a lot of the standards were submitted were trials. So if I could tell you anything, this book cost me $2.50. That's it. It's $2.50 
to print it, go to Walmart, buy a 50 cent binder and um, some cover sheets and throw it in there and have it with you while you're writing. It, it takes a second to glance away. And I promise you, myself as a consumer, I think, Tommy, you've made major purchases in your life and a lot of you have. I would rather know that somebody is giving me all my information and says, you know what, I want to look at this real quick because then they know that you're giving them sound information rather than like, oh, you know, I'm going to write you. I'm not sure if you qualify because you have every resource given to you and your agents to be 100% certain of what you're telling them. And Tommy did mention to you on writing sick people, you know, um, and I was in on all these meetings with Tommy and they were great and I'm still learning. Um, but with sick people, if you have someone that is sick, they say that you should write them on a separate app. If you're not sure, don't write them with the family because that's one thing that I'm finding with withdrawals. You guys are writing very sick people with their family, and when they get declined, they withdraw all of their policies because you're not giving them that information up front. So that will that will make them know, okay, listen, you know, I, you, because of the information I have, I may be, I'm going to try to get you through, but I'm not sure. So I'm going to write your application separate, and then... I'm going to write wife and kids on this other application because then the wife and kids who are healthy, they're automatically going through. They're not sitting there as dead weight because you're waiting on dad to get put through or whatever because he's sick. So that's really, you know, what I wanted to touch base with. And I also just want you guys all to know, and I talked to Tommy about this yesterday um, briefly, but this job is forever learning. Tommy is, they change things and we have to learn new things. And in this SGA, I'm learning new things. And um, I do go out of my way to learn whatever I can for you guys, but I, I make mistakes too um, in the learning process because I don't always get all the information. But I will be the first person to step forward and say, ah, I, I thought I was doing the right thing by the information I have. Clearly, I, I need to dig more information out. So nothing that I do, I don't do it out of, like, just free will. I'm just trying to do the best by everybody. And um, really, that's all I have for you guys. Just, you know, pack your pipeline. Use the underwriting, field, the field writer manual. It's, it's the best tool for making sure you have good solid apps and and you don't have to chase stuff down. If you do it up front, then you're able to move on to new deals. Like Tommy said, you're not going back and spending valuable time trying to fix something that you should have submitted correctly to begin with. That's all I got. Thanks, Jack. Thank you, Jack. Appreciate well, you. Hey, um, all right. As a side note, guys, like if if uh, for hierarchy purposes, you know, make sure that uh, everybody's using the hierarchy properly to where, you know, an agent goes to the SA, the SA goes to the GA, the GA goes to the MGA, the MGA goes to the RJ and the RJ goes to the SGA. And at that point, guys, if 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 we need to bring you something to Jackie, I will direct that. You know, I don't want agents going to Jackie essays GAs and really you know we want to try to avoid minimal with even with the MGAs like just bring it to me or something and then if I'm like you want to know what uh I don't know somebody's phone needs to be muted let me see here oh Jack I want to mute can you mute your phone yeah, Jack come back yeah uh if you know, and, and if I say, hey, you know, let's bring Jackie in on this, then we'll bring her in on this. But I don't want her just automatically just, I don't know what to do, call Jackie. I don't know what to do, call Jackie. Everybody's like, I just call her all the time. And uh, it's, 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 it just gets too overwhelming. And, you know, it's not her job. And nobody, you, you, you know, uh, she, she's, she's got a lot of stuff going on. She's not just sitting around, you know, obviously she's waiting for our call. So just do that, uh, run it through me. And then if I'm like, you know what, call Jackie on that. 
I'll, I'll tell you when to call Jackie. And then I'll probably let her know, hey, G- Gio's going to call you on this or Vince is going to call you on this, you know. So um, so that, that that that'll be very that'll be helpful. Um, but yeah, so uh, thank you, Jackie. That's all huge, important. Do not ignore any emails from her. Uh, and um, we got to continue to do more retention workshops with our agents, you know, uh, at least once a month. But I think, you know, more than that, at this stage, we should be doing retention workshops. So I'd like to try and set one up twice or twice a month um, to where we can, you know, I'll run one, Gio can run one, Jackie can do one, Josh can do one, Casey can do one, we could all do one and go over, you know, uh, you know, the, the retention stuff for, for the, for the whole agency, you know? Um, so that's a side note. Uh, so, so before we get off, uh, we wanted to clarify the contest, right? So what's, what's, what's the deal? I thought we already figured it out. You know, that she sent back 4k and if you add up the 4k, she sent back, did that load? If the 4k got sent back and if it loaded, you know, Plus, you know, whatever she sent this week that wasn't more than Matt Brown. Yes. Yeah, I was just I'm, I'm, I want to be clear on the rules moving forward, because I know that she that 4K was used to beat right last week. Now it's being used to beat Matt Brown this week. So like, no, it wasn't. We went over those numbers. Yeah, I mean, Frank still would have lost. I'm, I'm just saying, like, if someone. So what are you talking about, Vince? We are I, I, I'm, I, I, I do not let anybody cheat. And uh, we already clarified this, okay? And Vent and Geo doesn't want to cheat either. He, if the, if they, if she lost, she would have lost. Me and him went over this. Uh, she did not send that business back to beat Reich, okay? She beat Reich off the business that was sent off before that 4K. So if you take Reich's business that he sent off and the business that Ashley sent off, minus the 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 4K that she sent off on Monday, she didn't send that off. It's not like she said, oh, I want to send it back. That was an accident that Jackie did. Right. Jackie sent 4K back on accident on Monday. That's what happened from businesses she wrote on Monday because she wrote it that Monday. All right. So okay. we never counted that business in her victory against Reich. So okay. she didn't send any business back to beat Reich. She okay. beat Reich off the Monday to Monday business that she wrote fair and square. If that's a false statement, let me know and we would make that change. But we already looked into it, and that, that's not a false statement for what I know. Are we wrong here? What's the, what's, so this, are we right or wrong? Are we good? Is it okay? So, so she didn't send no business back to be right, or did she? No. Okay, all right. So that's a false statement. Then don't say she sent business back to be right because she didn't. And then the second thing is, okay, that 4K was written th- this, this week. So, so it's going to count in the week that it was written for, not that week. So we have to add whatever she loaded plus the 4K. And that's against Matt Brown. So what did she load this week? Uh, like 4,000. 4, 4,000. Okay. And what did Matt Brown load? Matt Brown only loaded about five. Okay. So, so if that 4,000 loaded from last Monday, then that'll count on hers and she's over eight. So that's it. The rules are the rules. It's Monday to Monday. But if staff accidentally send your business off, I'm not going to screw you. I'm going to counter for the week. And I'm not going to I'm not going to give you an advantage. I'm not going to screw you either. And I'm not going to give her an advantage or screw her either. So I counted it for the week that needed to be counted in, which is the week that it was written, which is after nine o'clock on Monday. So is that right? Does that make sense? Or am I, are we wrong? I don't want anybody to be screwed in this competition. The last thing I want is anybody thinking that that somebody got cheated you know what i'm saying and if i won i wouldn't want to win by anything but fair and square are, are is anybody uh upset about the the competition or are we clear and are we good is everybody happy geo are you guys good vince it seems like vince is not happy <laughs> Mark wants to know uh, about the company one, I guess. Is there like an update? Yeah, the company one. So um, what's today, Thursday? Uh So today the advance reports come out. Um, So I don't know when they send it out. 
probably today or tomorrow we should get the results. Um, I think I got them Friday last week. I think I got them Friday last week, but it, it for some reason it didn't show up. Like I, I, I didn't see it until Sunday, but we usually get them Friday. So we should know. And then you got to know, like you're a week behind. Right. So like right now, you don't even know if you're, you're, you won this week or not, but you got to be competing like you won this week. You know what I'm saying? Cause it's like, you got to wait until the advance reports load. So, yeah. Yeah. So you, you know, you're still alive until, until, you know, until not, but what, what did you send off on Monday? Marvin. Uh, like 30, 33. 33. So, so you got 33 loading for you this week. And, 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 you know, that kind of screwed Ashley in the competition because the week before she loaded like uh, 11,000 and the person she was against only loaded six, she didn't need that extra four. She only needed what she loaded. Now that F4 didn't load this week, she only loaded four this week. So she might have actually only got 4,000 this week. So that could have hurt her, exactly. you know? Um, and then we had, who else was left? Christina was still, no, Melissa was still in it, right? Yeah. 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 So anyways, all right. So, so that's, that's that on the competition. We don't have no upsets. We're good to go. Just want to clarify, let you guys know, I looked into all that too. And, you know, I definitely wouldn't let anybody slide or, or win anything un, un, undeserving. Promise you guys, you know, um, have, make sure everybody has Venmos. I'm going to pay everybody at the Venmos on the, on the uh, money you know, for the uh, winning, you know, the, the uh, what they win a hundred bucks. They all want a hundred bucks. Um, if you guys want to know, we're at 22,000 for the week. We're behind. So we got to have a heck of a, heck of a comeback, heck of a weekend. Um, any feedback on leads? Like we did this lead reshuffle and, you know, I don't know, was it good, bad, indifferent? Okay. All right. Um, do we need to give leads to anybody? Anybody need any more leads? Like we got, a, we got some people that need to do like 10,000 a week for the next two weeks here. And I just want to make sure you guys have enough resources to get this job done. So how about this? We'll end on this. Just send me some emails on leads if you need some emails and I'll try and get them, get them out to you guys today. All right. All right, guys. Appreciate you guys. Let's close out this week, man. Gotta have a big one. Thanks.